All right, we're live. <clears throat> uh, hi, everybody. I hope you guys had a great week. Uh, it's it's Sunday, which I don't really do very much anymore. But we actually have a, a special guest who is actually <laughs> almost always my guest right now. We have Eric Grove, but he's actually right here with me, sitting beside me in the studio. We don't have the camera uh, pointed at us. Honestly, just because this is going to be a really work intensive thing. I wanted to start just with the blank paper, draw the thing, ink it. It's going to be pretty quick. It's just going to be ahead and then go through the entire painted process all the way to finish tonight. I'm hoping that we can get it done in two hours. If it goes a little long, it goes a little long. But uh, yeah, thank you everyone for coming and uh, spending your Sunday night with us. And I hope you guys really get a lot out of this. This process that we've gone through here has been such a long time coming to get to where we are now. This will change over time, but um, anyway, I'm not going to over talk this thing all night. Let me just get started drawing. So uh, we're actually going to be drawing Green Goblin. We did a test of it last night, and that's actually the thumbnail for this stream. If you guys saw the thumbnail, that's that was our, our test. Actually, let me bring his head down this way so I can get his hat in here. So I'm going to do something basically the same today. We just wanted to make sure that everything would work and we kind of, you know, had all the bugs worked out. And with Eric, we're going to be going back and forth with this one, actually. I'm going to draw this. Eric's going to ink this. And then I'm going to put in the shadow with the uh, brush. And uh, we'll just be going back and forth. So, uh, yeah. Tag team restaurant. Tag team painting. <laughs> that means we don't have to have two screens, which is kind of nice, you know. It's all on one screen. It's good to see everyone here again, all the, all the regulars and definitely some whole lot of new folks too. So any any questions, feel free to ask. We'll do our best to, it'll yeah. be a little bit easier to answer and uh, read messages tonight since we're both sitting here. Yes. Oh, and by the way, uh, because this is more of a process, I'm not really talking to the mic, because this is a bit more of a process kind of a stream uh, as, as opposed to just hanging out, you know, um, I really want to make sure that to cover everything that I'm using. So this paper here is a smooth Bristol. Uh, this is a, the same stuff as a uh, comic board. It's just, uh, we got these printed when we did Monday Night Draw, the, the book that we did. Is it last year now? Time flies. Yeah, yeah for the uh, <clears throat> the Kickstarter. So um, I had extra left over, so we're, we're using that. My pencil is a an H lead, which is actually harder than I, or softer than I normally use. I use a 2H. But I'm using an H because it's very warm and humid here right now. And I'm just finding that uh, I was having trouble with uh, uh, with the H. It just wasn't really working well. Uh, B flow wants to know what is the weight of the paper? I think it's about the same as the Strathmore 200. Yeah, so. I'm going to say it's about, yeah, Strathmore 200. You know, to give you an idea, it's it's not a super thick paper. It's just a decent kind of a card stop, but nothing crazy. Yeah. It, it, with what we're doing here, it, it holds up. Just and fine, so. we have a way of prepping this thing that you will see, actually. Uh, we use a um, a Pash airbrush, which we'll be doing that very, very shortly. But a Pash airbrush, ultra matte medium, which I really like. It gets it a nice texture. And uh, airbrush medium, because I can, I can put medium on this with a brush, but it can just disturb what's underneath it and cause some problems using an airbrush to put on medium uh, totally eliminates that problem. And I end up with something that's nice and smooth and I don't have uh, the potential of smudging what's below. So that's why we do it. Uh, and there are times we'll end up uh, doing uh, that medium pass a couple of times because there's going to be a lot of colored pencil on this. This is a very colored pencil heavy process. And uh, colored pencil, if you've used it a lot, you'll know that if you, if you put a lot down, you can't really get any more on there. And if you want to continue, your only choice really is to re-prepare the surface, which is very difficult to do. And painting a medium on there will definitely disturb your colored pencils and, and mess them up a little bit. So that's why we use the airbrush. All right. Gonna... So random, random pen, listen up with the general approaches. Uh, we'll try and explain what we're doing, but yeah. uh, it will be recorded and uh, yeah. you can rewatch it and see exactly what we're doing step by step. But to give you a, just a general overview before you start and decide whether you think this is like a totally crazy process, you know, like, hey, that's it, I'm out. Um, this is going to be pencil. I'm going to ink it. It's not going to have any rendering because that would get in the way. Uh, even inking it, it can create something that you kind of have to cover, but that's not really an issue. We'll get there. So it, it's going to be ink. Then we're going to prep the surface so it's a nice surface to uh, paint on. 
Then we're going to hit it all with a, a dark local color, fairly unsaturated. So it'll be a fairly unsaturated darker green for his face, yellow for his eyes, purple for his hat. And uh, we'll go from there. So, oh, and, and then it's, it's colored pencil from there. Uh, and then a passive airbrush and then more colored pencil. It's, you'll see. Uh, my sister was asking if we use airbrush with the mask or anything. No, we don't. The paint we're using is, it's, it's water-based paint at low PSI. And we don't spray paint cadmiums or, uh, or any of the nasty pigments. So um, Yeah, and it is very low uh, PSI, very focused paint. So we don't end up with, there's no particulates or anything atomizing in the air that would cause that kind of a problem. Yeah. That was a um, question, actually, I remember you having uh, quite a while ago because you want to be pretty careful with that stuff, especially with, uh, you know, kids in the house. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's another question here. Uh, let me just scroll up real quick. Uh, D, D screw gaming. Do you think this is a similar technique used by guys like Jim Murray and Bisley from the nineties? Uh, yes. While we don't know exactly what they were doing, uh, best guess, you know, this is pretty close. I think. Uh, yeah. Now the fact is that there are differences. Um, I found even between those artists and their own processes, like, it's not like they all had the same process, but this is very much, uh, in keeping. Uh, Simon Bisley used a lot of colored pencil. I know Glenn Fabry. Uh, and there are times, and you will see, you can really see the colored pencil. And then a lot of times you really can't at all. And um, for the most part, I'll be mixing it to, uh, and so will Eric, to such an extent that you cannot tell the difference between colored pencil and paint. Yeah. So it makes it very difficult to, you know, if somebody's not willing to explain their process to you, to be able to figure out, is that paint? Is it colored pencil? You just really can't tell. Uh, I saw a, uh, a video online of Bill Sienkiewicz, who is a phenomenal uh, painter and definitely um, an influence for Bisley and, and, and uh, Jim Murray and some of those guys. And uh, he was using watercolor. And at one point during the, the painting, he, um, he stopped and used matte medium. And he actually used a roller to put it on so it wouldn't disturb the surface. I like the airbrush. The roller would work too. I just, I like the airbrush. It, it works easily. So uh, but it, it's the same kind of a thing when you want to lock down what you have and give yourself a, a fresh painting surface. And that was a revelation to me when yeah, I saw basically that. Basically hitting, you know, hitting save digitally. Yeah. Everything's locked in and you can keep going. Well, in the, in colored pencil, you really can only go so far. Yeah. And uh, giving it, you know, resurfacing it like that is is really, you're starting from square one with the colored pencil again. You can do all of the things that you could do when you first started. Uh, you can, you know, really hit your whites and your light colors again, which yeah. you just can't do otherwise. Yeah, it does, so, a good job, it does a good job of sealing wax buildup. Yes. If, even if you've really gone and burnished a bunch, yeah. spraying it down like that will just bring all the tooth back. So that's why we do it. Yeah. That was uh, that was such a big thing for me to kind of figure out is, um, I, I've seen people online using colored pencil and you know, you have to plan like crazy to make sure to not run into those kinds of problems or you can just, you know, learn how to surface your paper again, uh, which, and this is such a mixed, a mixed media approach. I'm really not interested in um, a, a pure acrylic painting technique where I'm, because for those of you that have tried acrylic paint, I'm sure you've run into the fact that it, it is incredibly difficult to mix smoothly and you'll end up with brush strokes. It's a real problem. It's a massive headache and uh, I fought with that for years and years, <clears throat> and uh, Drew Struzan is, is an artist that is entirely airbrush and colored pencil, and the reason he does that is because you can get a much smoother, easier uh, surface that way than trying to fight with paint, um, and that's, it's a very common technique. It's a very common, you know, illustrator uh, and movie post artist technique. Um, what we're doing is is definitely a deviation from that in a lot of ways, but it's it's much more in keeping with uh, you know, Simon Bisley and kind of that school of art. And this is kind of what we've been pursuing with this stuff for a while, trying to, you know, get a, a hang of how those guys work. Story of Osmosis is here. Uh, it's the actual Dracula. Is this an acrylic matte medium you're talking about? Yes, it is. And to be specific, it's, ul it's ultra matte medium. <laughs> I moved and I lost my color. This is it right here. It is Liquitex uh, uh, ultra matte medium. 
So there you go. Uh, I can't find this at my my local. I go to Michael's. It's the only store that's local. I'm in Canada, so some of you guys might have a more comprehensive art store, but I I just got this on Amazon. Yeah, and the uh, the Ultimate Medium, you know, obviously contains more. I think it's Marvel Dust. I'm not quite sure, but it it has a lot more of the particular um, uh, sand, whatever. Yeah, it gives the, it a grit. Yeah, the medium. And, yeah. and, and, and when you spray it down, it just gives you good tooth. Yes. Now we mix it with airbrush medium and this is Liquitex airbrush medium. Uh, this stuff works very, very well for any medium that you want to put through the airbrush. We also use a patch. Let me show that right now. So this is my Pash airbrush, which I don't clean the best. Uh, this is a single action airbrush. I've got the large um, head in it right now. So this thing is like a fire hose, which you need to be able to spray a thick medium. I mean, this stuff will spray just about, like this kind of airbrush will spray about anything. It's like a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cheap. Yeah, it's a, it's a workhorse, just keeps, yeah. keeps going. Easy, it's easy to tear down and clean. <clears throat> and it actually is exactly the kind of airbrush that uh, Simon Bisley and uh, those guys were using. And, and you can see, Corbin. yeah, and Richard Corbin, it gives you, um, when you brush it down, uh, you can see here, this is this is airbrush from, um, <laughs> thank you, from this one. This is a, an Iwata HPC, uh, and it gives you a much finer spray. This is spray from the Pash, uh, and I've got it fairly high pressure so it gives you a pretty tight spray but it's it's a definitely more of a you get more of a texture it's actually very easy to get a heavier texture if that's what you want to which you'll see in you know simon bisley for years has claimed that he uh, uh uses a um uses spray cans and i have no doubt i'm sure he does here and there but there are so many things that you cannot do it with a spray can it's just it's like hitting it with a big blast so he was absolutely using a patch he just has never admitted it, which is very frustrating. Uh, Art of Wade King says, have fun guys, hope to bump into you guys soon. Yeah, it'll be great. Uh, hopefully we'll run into each other at a convention. Uh, Random Pen, it's a good good question. What is your take on painting over ink drawings? I see a lot of artists avoiding using black at all because it does not really occur naturally. I like the graphic look. It, is, it really is for the graphic look, for the cosmetic, you know. Uh, yes, now we're using black. And I, I like using a lot of black. And the reason is um, this is a, a comic kind of illustration sort of painting. So, I mean, this is a full chromatic kind of spectrum of color and the whole thing. It's painting. But uh, something that I think really, really worked and was so powerful with, with Simon Bisley and all those, those artists is the black gave it a really graphic look. And I think it really worked for, for uh, comic art. And it's the look that I really like. So yeah. I definitely stick with black. Uh, I don't think artists that avoid it are wrong, yeah. but when you when you when you paint over black the way we're gonna be doing tonight, somewhat it it does tint the black in U shift, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes. Dave, Dave and I are also gonna be experimenting yes uh, with using airbrush to you know build up the shadows as well. In fact, Dan Lessard's here and he's been uh, showing us some of that. All right, switch, and we have a super chat from Sprawl to Brawl. Thank you very much for five dollars, and he says uh, we're gonna be doing. Monday Night Draw again, we will be actually, that's coming um, in, can you get through, oh, he's going around. <laughs> that's coming in September. We'll be doing that again as soon as, as soon as the kids go back to school. So I think it'll be either the first week or the second week of September, but yeah, that's coming right up. And I'm really looking forward to having Meredith down here again and getting back to Monday Night Draw. It's been too long. So suddenly Dave is right-handed. He started inking with his right hand now. Yeah. So. so here we go. <clears throat> Now the pressure's on. Yeah, everyone's looking in. Yeah, not only do you want to try and make it nice, but you want to do it fast. And you know what else is limiting? This is this is to be my excuse. Just go, go, go. <laughs> no excuses. The, the excuse is the camera's in my way. There we go. Henry Jemmer says, Dave, you must be happy that Danny Ricardo is back. Yeah, I, I, I'm thrilled. He's my favorite. And, the honey uh, Badger. Honey Badger is back at Alpha Tari. Uh, that's Formula One. <laughs> For all you guys that don't watch Formula One, I'm sure that's a lot of you, but yeah. He's back. We'll see how he does. Yeah. So far, so good for him. And I'm, I'm actually pretty happy. He's he's done really well in uh, in uh, his his return. Yeah. So still early days, but you know. Yeah. So you guys know. I think you can see it on the screen there. But we're using a Micron O1 for this. Yeah. Uh, that's the size they use for it. Whenever I use a Micron, it's always an O1. When I yeah. want to go thicker, I end up using my yeah these ones. 
yeah, the Tombo, and then uh, to fill in um, to fill in heavy blacks. Yeah. Now we'll, uh, we'll use a bit of those coming up. Yeah. For now, we're we're uh, getting this part done. Yeah. I, this is, is such a fast way to work, and I always wondered how it was that you know uh, Bisley and, and all those guys. I'm going to say something Bisley three million times tonight, <laughs> but I always wondered how is it possible that they could do entire comics painted, you know? Well, the reason is that they've really used a method where you're not you're not limited by the limitations of any, any one medium, you know? So you use acrylic where it works and you use colored pencil where it works. And colored pencil, I, I think you guys will see tonight, it is more versatile than you would think. Uh, and airbrush where it works. Yeah. Um, now we are using, uh, uh, luminance, the Karen Dush pencils, which we really, really enjoy. Uh, you know, you can use Prismacolor. There's so many different. Uh... Well, in DLC, we've actually kind of got both. I have, I have all my luminance and all my Prismacolor just dumped in a big, huge box together. Yeah. Chris Burke says, uh, "Dave, over your shoulder, watching Yankees and I'm going. That would be off the charts anxiety for me." Yeah, yeah, it can be pretty nerve wracking. Yeah, but fun. So <laughs> that's what it's about tonight. Actual Dracula says, "Just say the biz." Yeah, all right. And Dark Air in New Vegas uh, says, so white gel pens, would you suggest? The couple types I've tried can sometimes seem to not work. Uh, we use a Posca. It's not a gel pen. It's a paint pen. Uh, yeah, that's it right there. Um, so it's not a gel pen, but it will also give you trouble. It, you have to shake it. Here. Oh. You can hear it's got a ball on there. You have to shake it up really well. If you don't, it'll come out like a white, well, a clear liquid. It won't really work very well for you. Uh, and it still can actually uh, not go on as, as well as you'd like in, in one pass. So you basically end up having to do it, let it dry, and you really need to let it dry. Uh, and then give it another pass. <clears throat> Anthony G wonders when I became ambidextrous. Oh, and Henry Jeremy says, uh, Dave, Aaron Lopresti showed the painting that you did of Clayface. It looked great. Thank you. I um, I have owed uh, Aaron a painting for years. He, he did a beautiful uh, picture from years ago when we were doing a trade. And I had a, I had a sketchbook, and he asked for it back. And I was like, oh, because I, I didn't get it done. And, yeah, so it was nice to actually, you know, um, meet my side of the bargain there. And Random Pat asks if we're going to be doing portfolio uh, review uh, streams again. Uh, yeah, you know, we haven't done that in ages. It's been so long. I haven't done the stream, um, uh, yeah, like that for, for a long, long time. I kind of like to do that. I, I'm, I'm so torn. I'm so busy with work. Uh, definitely more busy than I have been. I, I just finished a, a Batman cover just before Eric got here. Uh, this week, which was a blast, and uh, I'm still you know, doing Walking Dead covers. Uh, I have a tutorial that I promised that I would have finished this month, and I, I, I don't know why I promised, but I'm doing my best. And uh, yeah, I'd like to do that. This too. is other nostril. We're gonna leave that. Uh, yeah, whatever. Put it in. I don't know. It is his other nostril, though. Don't matter. All right. You know, he has another nostril. <laughs> One Mighty R says, I just asked uh, Robert Mozilla the same thing. Yeah, I'll have to talk to him and see uh, if he's got time. I don't know how busy he is right now. And Chris Olette says, you were great at reviewing my portfolio at Trificon. Thanks again. Well, thank you. And you're very welcome. <clears throat> uh, Henry asked what I got from Aaron LaPresti. I'll, I'll have to find it and show you. I'm not going to do that right now. So working through the ear, you actually get much quicker with the, you get much more confident with that line. Yeah, everyone's watching. And <clears throat> well, just in general. Holding my breath and going for it. Yeah. Yeah, the biggest thing is trying to trying to throw straight lines and, and uh, yeah, ro rotating the paper. Yeah. And, Unfortunately, I'm not going to be at Fan Expo uh, this year. I'm sure I'll be there next year. And, yeah, obviously, I... It, 
I'm sad to not be doing a, I don't think I'm doing a single Canadian show this year, which it just kind of so happened. But uh, Fan Expo is a huge, great show. So hopefully I'll be back soon. And uh, JDSCT says, uh, if you ignore Max for staff in the racing, it's been fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I'm, he's really good, but yeah, it kind of gets boring after a while because it's just a formality. He's just going to win, you know? Yeah, it's a race to who's second and third. And any any anyone who gets second, that's like that's a victory. You know, you're number one at that point. Uh, Pizza Maria says, "Please do tutorial on how to correctly place eyes into the head when drawing." I literally haven't drawn in almost two months because I've given up. Uh, I just did an eye tutorial, didn't I? Yeah, David's got um, you know drawing heads and faces, and uh, yeah, yes, I, there's an eye. There's an eye tutorial. There is definitely one on there, and it shows how to place them in the head and. Comprehensive. So, I'd go ahead and just take a look back and see if you can find that one. And uh, yeah, the best advice Dave gave gave to me is um, just draw the skull first and draw the eye sockets. It really helps. Yeah. Um, but uh, and I think you do cover that. Comics artist, uh, comic artist one hundred and one says, "How do you guys get so confident with thinking this looks so good so far?" Well, thank you very right. much on Air's behalf. Uh, the the real trick to it. And it took Eric a bit. To, it took me a bit to get the hang of this too when I was starting. But it's turning the paper because you have a natural flow to your hand where it's easy to push the line, and you can kind of fight your hand too. And so if you get comfortable turning the paper so your hand flows easily, it goes much better. Yeah, for right-handed people, you know, this line is really easy. You know, for for me to do this is really you can tell they're shakier. So turning the paper to get that constantly is what you want to do. Yeah, the challenge is getting doing it enough that it just becomes second nature and you're not thinking about it. Like I'm sure Eric is not thinking for a second about which way he's turning the paper. It just feels natural. Our Jedi has a five dollar super chat. Thank you very much. He says, hey Dave, want to thank you for the cover and having me on again. The campaign is doing great and everyone's excited for their Finch Amarok cover. That's awesome. I'm glad it's doing well. It's such an amazing book. And if you guys haven't checked it out, go in and look just look up Amarok. Uh, on uh, it's on Kickstarter, right? Is it on Kickstarter or is it on Indiegogo? I can't remember. Uh, there's a we did a live stream uh, recently, and uh, you know, and all, all links are there, and the whole campaign information. And uh, Dave was drawing Amarok. Don't stop. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Raw has a five dollar super chat. Thank you very much. And he says, with using a wet medium like acrylic and airbrush. Now, airbrush is much less of a wet medium than you might think because it. Particularly, it's so small that it, it almost hits dry. Uh, do you need to prep the surface with a gesso or anything like that? Mm -hmm. um, well, yes and no. You don't. Look, we could just go right ahead and just do this, and it would be all right. But I definitely find the initial washes go on easier uh, with a. Uh, don't even worry about those. I'm going to leave those dry. Yeah. It definitely goes a whole lot easier with um, the surface we're going to put on it, which is just ultra matte medium. You can use matte medium. I just like the ultra matte for how the color pencils react to it. I don't know anybody else that uses ultra matte. Yeah, by the time we get to painting, the paper's sealed. So you yeah. don't have to worry about that. Mm -mm. Jimmy Reyes is here. We have Jimmy, hey, Jimmy Reyes in the house. Good to see you, Jimmy. I hope you're doing well. All right. I think we're good for All right. your inks. Okay. Okay, we're switching. This is precarious, so give us a second. I'm just going to come around behind you and then I'll hand this to you. If I trip on one cable, we're, we're all fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys have no idea what a mess it is in here. Well, I, mean, I wasn't suggesting that. Just... It's always a mess. Oh, in this ear. Shoot. I should have done that. Okay. That yep. Okay, here we go. All right, let's see. Uh... Yes, yeah, so what Dave's using now is a really, uh, it's, it's really versatile. You can get really thin lines and, you know, you can really fill black areas pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, and that's definitely where this pen excels at is, is, uh, covering large areas with, uh, with ink. Yes. And there are some artists that, that use this pen. This is a, a pencil brush pen. Um, 
<clears throat> it has a particular name, I'm sure. I don't know what it is. I will say this. If you go to Jet Pens or if you go to uh, Amazon, you can find these. Just type in uh, Pentel Brush Pen. They won't come up first, but they will come up. And when you do find them, don't get the ones with the black handle because all the ink is in this. This is a chamber that yeah. comes apart. The gray ones are more permanent. The black ones are kind of designed to be watered and moved around, and they can be a real problem. Yeah, yeah, Richard Pace. It's the yeah the Pentel color brush. I think it goes by very uh, different names, but yeah, the, the color brush you'll find it on on Jet Pens, Amazon, uh, and you can you can buy replacement barrels of ink as well. Yeah. Um, hi says, how do I get better with perspective? Uh, yeah, that's a. That's an interesting question. Um, it's I say that because you know it's something I generally sh struggle with. But David's got some again. David's got some good videos on his channel uh, that you can uh, that you can look at. He did a did a one point I think a two parter which uh, which is really good. Uh, he did uh, perspective hacks I believe it was. Which yeah. Is some really really good tips and tricks uh, to uh, get better at perspective and they they do work so. I uh, definitely go back and I would I would post a link, but I've got my hands full <laughs> right now. <laughs> but I uh, definitely search the channel for that. Yeah, and I, I will say that it, the there's basic perspective, you know, and and the knowledge that goes into that uh, one point and two point and that kind of thing. But then there's there's actual practical perspective and and how to use it, you know, in in kind of a reasonable time frame workflow. And that's where my perspective hacks video is much more kind of focused. Um, ways to in ways that I, I really learned how to doing uh, do perspective when I first started, especially Look, looking at other artists' uh, work or looking at um, like movie stills, that kind of thing. You you can pick up the perspective from something that you like and put something entirely different. Anyway, check out the video. <clears throat> I feel like we have some new people here. We're getting questions about yeah. stuff that I've done a while ago. So I really appreciate you guys yeah, coming by. I would say that pretty much the majority of questions you have has been covered in some form or another uh, in a video. And uh, for the most part, not entirely, just because, yeah, you know, it's so vast of a subject. But. Yeah. Like I, I still have, I thought I was kind of running out of ideas. <coughs> Excuse me, but I still have, I still have more, more coming. Barbarian says, I see more awake than in Ellison's stream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. was a fun stream, but yeah, I was uh, I was running on fumes a little bit, but it was a lot of fun. So. Uh, Coming from Texas with a two hour time difference and then and then just, yeah, we were kind of running. This has been a crazy weekend. It was Meredith's 50th. Oops, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Whatever, it was 21st. 21st birthday this weekend. So we had a, a party at the house. Um, uh, and uh, there's a lot of planning that went into that and then a lot of cleanup and uh, yeah, Eric, you kind of came at the worst possible time. <laughs> yeah. Worst possible time for having help with that stuff. No, you was, you came at a great time. Don't yeah, get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Came, yeah. I had a lot of fun on the riding for my first time and that was, that was super fun. Still have a bit of a sunburn. Yeah, yeah I'm sporting a nice... Uh, a nice red tone on my body. <laughs> I um I went out with the tractor first. We have like this lawnmower attachment for the tractor that's huge, you know, so you can get a lot done really fast. And I hit a stump and bent the <laughs> the blade. One, it's got three blades at the bottom. I bent one, and so it's going whack 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 underneath. I had to stop it, so we had to do the rest with the riding lawnmower. And usually when I cut the grass, I do the all the edging and trimming a separate day because it's just so much work, but kind of had to get it all done that day. It was a long day outside. Uh, Jimmy was mentioning that his cardiologist prayed with him, so he was happy about that. And his birthday is this week. Oh, well, happy birthday. Week. This week or next week. I'm, I'm going to say happy birthday now in case yeah. I don't talk to him. So that's great. Uh, a lot of happy birthday, Meredith. How big is that car that you're working on? Like five by seven roundabout? Uh, yeah. Now, I mean, yeah. my hand is kind of average size, so yeah. about that big. It's not like I have massive Baby paws, hands. you know. <laughs> <laughs> what was that commercial with, uh, was it a, oh, I can't remember who it was, with that little guy with the small hands that was eating, eating the burgers? <laughs> I don't know. Burger King. It was a burger King. I don't think I ever saw that one. Anyway, let's move on. 
esoteric <laughs> fast food commercial knowledge from Eric Grove. <laughs> yeah, someone here knows it, I'm sure. Hopefully, maybe it was a U.S. only commercial. You know? Yeah, I don't know. Could be. All right, we're getting there pretty quick. Yeah, I think so. I ended up so, with a lot less neck than in our example yeah, one that we did yesterday. It might, it might be a good thing. I might speed things up a bit. I don't know. Uh, Brian McPhee was saying, so Dave, you're going to sing Happy Birthday for Meredith Will did. Yeah, she got serenaded. So. Oh, you should have seen it. I took pictures. <laughs> I need to post some of those. She was in fine form. <laughs> you know, hold on. You guys got to see this. Somewhere there, yeah. Okay. Now I'm the one not working. Yeah. Should crack the whip here. I know. So here is here's Meredith. Can I make it bigger? She her, she got a Red Hat Society hat. This is for you know older women. It's like a club. <laughs> Plus the outfit apparently that goes with it. I don't know. And somebody got her uh, some some yarn to knit, so she knitted a miniature scarf. Yep. And uh, I took a I just took a bunch of pictures. Now I'm scrolling through everything. Here she is with her cane. Yeah, <laughs> she was out of control. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. Uh, Art of Roy. I think isn't isn't the birthday? I think birthday is public domain. Right now, I don't think you can get copyright stuff on that one. Yes, it is. Yeah. If so, I guess half of the Monday Night Raw videos will get struck down. And half. half. They haven't so more than half. <laughs> yeah, more than half. Yeah, it contains a lot of uh, happy birthday songs. It does. Yeah, that one I think you can get away with. You know, there are a lot of things like that. Yeah, for ages you couldn't sing Happy Birthday, right? Because it was copyrighted. It was a problem, but yeah. I think it's all public domain now. So some of these lines that I'm putting in, we're going to end up kind of covering and lightening down quite a bit. So don't worry that it ends up looking a little less like a painting. This is totally a drawing right now. But again, this is totally the style. This is, this is, uh, you know, the kind of Bisley, uh, Fabry, uh, Jim Murray kind of a style. I always think it's such a shame that there's there's so little of that now. You know, it was very popular for a while, and it, it really, it, like a lot of things, you know, it kind of faded. You know, the the twenty ninety nine stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, do you want to say yes? We can say person? and yeah. We mentioned this actually on um, Alison McGlone's stream. We were on Alison McGlone's channel. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. Uh, it was her birthday. So we did a, a birthday stream for her uh, a few days ago. Um, but uh, yeah, we mentioned that we have uh, an incredible uh, cover artist. He is really taking over over at Marvel and DC, uh, doing covers for both of them. They're incredibly popular. He's he's blowing up fast. And uh, we were lucky enough to get him to agree to come and do a painting stream with us. So part of the reason I really wanted to do this now is this is our current technique, you know? But I think we're gonna learn a lot from uh, the artists that we have on. Uh, he is incredible. I think he he takes a lot of, of the things that I love about uh, uh, the biz <laughs> and, you know, uh, Fabry and, and Jim Murray and all those guys, uh, Greg Staples. Now, Greg Staples um, is a, an incredible atmospheric artist too, but uh, we have Ryan Brown coming on and uh, his work is, stunning he is yeah really really amazing and uh he's going to go through a slow deliberate process we're not going to be finishing a whole picture with ryan we're going to be doing as much as we can of a picture so we can really get a proper sense of exactly how he works i mean this is going to be uh you want to talk about somebody that now ryan is from england and he's very tight with that whole group this is somebody that is very intimately familiar with uh, all of that technique uh, I think this is a massive coup for the channel and for the internet. I've been searching for years to find information on this kind of stuff. I'm going to leave it there. I think that's all, all right. we need. Yep. So from here, uh, no, pencil. from here, we need a pencil. Okay. Eric's taking over. 
I forgot about pencil. I do this a lot. Okay, so we're going to use black uh, colored pencil. Eric's going to go in there and do some shading, and uh, I'm going to move. That was a much better transition. Yeah, that was a lot better. I think we have a system down here. Yep. All right. Um, I need to sharpen this quick, so I apologize for the sound. This is just a Prismacolor uh, black. Hey, creamy. <laughs> I'm not going to read that whole name. <laughs> says, how are you so good? I tried your drawing tutorials, and my only my eye drawings turned out good. Uh, well, and thank you. But you know what? If your eye drawings turned out well, then that's a that's a huge thing right there, and that's something you can build on. And nobody learns how to do this overnight. You can learn so much uh, fast, but to really master it, it takes time. So. <clears throat> Uh, so what I'm doing here is just uh, start rounding out forms. Um, uh, do we just, have, sorry, Eric, do we have Russ Hicks here? Uh, no, his his daughter's birthday was yesterday. Okay, because so. I just saw Red King was banned in the comments. Did you do that? Because um, I put somebody in time. Well, this is totally behind the scenes stuff right now. Anyway, yeah. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Moving okay. on. Okay. Uh, yeah. He's uh, his daughter had a birthday, so I think uh, they might still be. I know that was yesterday. We uh, we were gonna stream yesterday, um, but we decided uh, today was a, was a bit better. We were wiped. So um, some maybe some of the you know, logistical stuff. Uh, Russ may not be here tonight. So. <clears throat> uh, Comic artist one hundred and one says uh, another question: How long did it take you to learn how to do shadows? Um, when I got into to Top Cow, this was when I first started. That was my first real job. I didn't really do any shadows for for a few months anyway. And every time I tried, it was just a real problem. Uh, and it wasn't until um, I talked to uh, J. Scott Campbell a little bit. And I, I wish I could remember the advice that he gave me. And I cannot remember for the life of me. I've been thinking about it for ages. But uh, that kind of helped. And uh, then I, I was I was looking at some um, some Mike Mignola, and he might actually have been the one to tell me to look at Mike Mignola. I just I can't remember. Anyway, uh, looking at Mike Mignola really really helped because he has such a graphic style. It's very very uh, simple, and um, he doesn't really get incredibly uh, convoluted with his shapes. So you don't get lost in the tiny little details, and you really just start to look at shadows as as blocks. And that's really the, the Biggest key to kind of unlocking how to do shadows when you're starting is to, to look at it as, you know, you have a major light area, a major dark area, uh, and then you want to kind of build from there. But it took me a while, um, and it, it took a lot of observation. Um, now, <clears throat> I am an artist-trained artist in the sense that I really learn everything that I know from looking at other comic artists. I'm, I'm really not a light drawing artist. So uh, for me, it was a lot of uh, Simon Bisley, a lot of Frank Rosetta. Mike Mignola, Kevin Nolan, uh, for those of you that have been, you know, watching for a while, and I appreciate it very, very much. I guess I'm, you know, all that. Uh, Box 99, 9.99 says, what do you think of Rob Liefeld? Uh, I think he's great. He's hilarious. He's, um, he's a huge amount of fun, and I'm a huge, huge fan of his work. Uh, he's, you know what, Rob came in. And it was an exciting time for artists. Arthur Adams had really revolutionized so much of what was happening in comics, uh, just with Longshot. When he did that, it was like a, a groundbreaking uh, book for the, for the industry. And I think a lot of young artists at the time picked up on what he was doing, and Rob Liefeld was among them. They have other influences too, but Rob did stuff that was incredibly, incredibly exciting. Also, I mean, he created some of the most important characters in comics. Yugo496 says, uh, sorry for asking again. Yeah, no worries. And sorry for missing it. How do you approach drawing super detailed buildings like some of your Batman covers? Uh, it's very difficult for me. It, okay. It, you really, first of all, it, it comes down to perspective first. You, you establish your perspective. I'd like to do a grid, uh, a really tight grid, and lighten it down so I've got it over the whole picture. And then you want to think in terms of just simple blocks. Um, and then you... Uh, start to put in windows, just as just a square shape. Uh, you really want to make sure that your windows are all proportional to each other, so you don't have a building with massive windows beside a building with tiny, tiny little windows. That's fairly obvious. And then the rest of it is um, um, incredibly difficult to explain. I'm sorry. I have a, a, 
a video on uh, drawing buildings. It's one of the first videos that I did. Uh, I would really recommend checking that out. I've got a few perspective videos and hopefully those can help. I, I wish I could just sit here and explain it right now, but it's so hard to verbally explain some of that stuff, but definitely chunk some of those videos out. Henry Jeremick says, Michael Goldman was big. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Tom McFarland was, you can see a lot of Michael Goldman influence. Actually, a lot of uh, the guys at Top Cow and at uh, Wildstorm, uh, when I started, were hugely influenced by Michael Goldman. He was a very big influence on the, the whole image kind of side of comics. And I'm sure, you know, there was a time, Eric, when we had like a California artist versus New York artist kind of thing mm -hmm. going on. And uh, um, I think both sides loved uh, Michael Goldman. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Ray Cannon says, are you friends with Top McFarlane? Whenever I think of Rob Liefeld, I think of Top McFarlane too. Um, you know what, like for me to say friends, I, I think that would be an exaggeration. I've talked to him a bunch of times and you know, he's great and okay, I talk to him at conventions, but it's not like I, I call him and say, hey, how's it going, you know, all the time and like we hang out. So no, I, I don't think that would be accurate to say. Kevin Stockard says, as a newer artist who wants to begin comic book drawing, should I start by drawing individual characters or by going straight into panels of, in storyboards? Uh, and not even individual characters. What you want to do is start by by drawing um, gesture drawings from books of artists that do it really well and do tons of them. And then you need to learn anatomy and you need to build from there to figures. Uh, doing panels, those kinds of things, and so you really have a, a grasp of, of how to draw uh, good figures just on their own and you know good anatomy is i think it's kind of putting the cart before the horse at the same time so much of learning how to do this is kind of going back and forth so you know uh, i don't think it hurts to, to learn some perspective learn how to put things together while you're still learning how to get better with your figures so right now eric and i i think i might interrupt you i'm sorry oh good is uh using a black prisma color yeah. And just going into this, actually, we learned from Ariel Olivetti. This is, we did a, a stream with Ariel uh, quite a while ago now, uh, which was incredible. And so, it, yeah, we've stuck with this one. Um, and so we're just getting a lot of the tone in just with colored pencil. It, it takes it quite a bit further than, and it, it means that once we get to the painting stage, we're not having to establish a lot of that tone quite as, as, as much. I, n I never push the stage enough, so I'm trying to, I'm going through some mental gymnastics here, trying to make sure I do. And uh, Kush Crazy says, what uh, size brush pen is that? That's actually a colored pencil. So it, it's a Prismacolor Premier? Or anyway, it's yeah, Prismacolor, Prismacolor yeah. Premier. Yeah. Henry Jeremy says, there's a lot of John Byrne and Jim Lee's art style. Uh, you can see a lot of Gil King and Frank Miller style, Michael Goldman and Art Adams style as well. Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the John Byrne in, in Jim Lee's art is, is pretty strong, and especially Jim Lee's early work, you could see a lot of John Byrne. He, when he was doing Alpha Flight, it was very, very strong. Uh, I have my theories with Jim Lee. I'm, okay, so I'm going to say Eric. Mm -hmm. Jim Lee is John Byrne heavily. Yeah. And then um, he had some Arthur Adams influence. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he was heavily influenced by um, um, Barry Windsor Smith for uh, a lot of his rendering that he was doing uh, in a very, very clean, uh, crisp version with Scott Williams and King. But I think a lot of that really came from Barry Windsor Smith. He did uh, Punisher War Journal, uh, and that stuff was so heavily influenced by um, Kevin Nolan. And I think Kevin Nolan's still a strong influence. For him this, is a, this is a main? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna just suggest it for now. So, okay. I'm trying to go as fast as I can at the same time, making sure I hit everything. I think the cal we can probably suggest with pencil later, or what do we want to do there? Um. Yeah, I, I can okay. put some in. <laughs> All right, yeah. There we go. Mm -mm. Ray King says, I like drawing more than I do coming up with stories, but I think it would be cool to make a story. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, some of the the best writers out there are artists too. Uh, Frank Miller, you know, uh, 
uh, is also an artist. I'm sure you guys will know that. I, I personally do not like writing. I think it's great to come up with. You know what I like? I coming up. I like coming up with a, a basic idea. Like, oh, wouldn't that be cool? You know. And that's about as far as it goes. I, I don't have um, the mental stamina that it takes because it really does, um, or maybe the aptitude. I'm sure the aptitude too to to be a writer. You know what I was doing, right? No. See, see if I had a see if I had a snapshot. Okay. <laughs> Sheldon Martin says in that Kevin Smith interview, Jim Lee said how he would run on the track and kept saying Miller burn, Miller burn over and over again. I did not know that. You know, and I would never place Frank Miller with with Jim Lee, but then he did Death Blow, which was. Uh, you know, more, more Miller than Miller, really. I mean, it might be a little, I don't know if I'm <laughs> too much to say that, but I, I, I thought it was some of his greatest work. I wish he would do more of that stuff. I love it. I'm a huge fan of when Jim Lee does that kind of work. The Screw Gaming says, I've been on a major Jim Murray binge for uh, the last few years, collecting everything I can. So these streams are coming at the perfect time. Cheers. Well, thank you very much. And I hope we can, you know, shed some light on a good part of the process. No artist is going to be exactly the same. Uh, so, you know, I'd be lying if I said, oh, this is exactly how Jim Murray worked. And there you go. That's what it, it's, there's always going to be, um, you know, idiosyncrasies to how different artists work. But this is very much, uh, this is a process in the sense that we're using all the same tools, all the same general um, and timing and, and process. I'm pretty sure. Outpost 48 has a five euro super chat. He says, I've been practicing inking, inking the last year and I got uh, at a decent level, but comic paper is quite expensive. Should I practice inking on copy paper? Um, yeah, you know what? I, okay, I'm going to say this. It depends on the tools you're using to ink. If you're using a brush, uh, you could probably get away with paper that's not quite as good because brush doesn't really disturb the paper as much. If you're using quill, you really need to use high quality paper. It would be a nightmare. If you're using um, the kind of tools that we use in here, which are, you know, they're synthetic kind of tools. They're not really traditional tools. Uh, you can get away with cheaper paper, yeah. And, you know, your results may vary, but definitely with, with good inking, it comes down to interpretation, uh, understanding the form, and uh, knowing how to throw a good clean line. And you can learn that on crummy paper, I'm sure. Actually, it'd probably make you better. Ardo Barris. I love being able to read the chat right now. Yeah. Because Meredith would never read this one. Death Blow and Punisher would have been a good crossover. And yes, it would. It would have been awesome. <clears throat> Michelle Martin says it was when Kevin, uh, was Kevin Smith's podcast was called Batman on Batman. She's already 10 years ago in 13. I did a Batman on Batman with Kevin Smith. I don't know if it was around then. It was a while ago now. Oh, hey, and Art, Art Oberist is Charles Petri. Oh, cool. There you go. See? Should have known. Should have known it was one of the OGs. He had a good comment. And then Chris Brooks says, I love Death Blow. Forgot about him for a while. Yeah. You know, it'd be nice to see something new with Death Blow. He's, he's one of those characters. He was great. You know, he was very, very popular. And then uh, they kind of moved on, which is too bad. Eli says, hey, David, any tips for the second draw through abridgments? I can't seem to hold the image in my head long enough to capture it. Um, yeah, you know, uh, it, the point isn't really to be able to uh, capture it perfectly anyway. So, you know, bear that in mind. What you want to get is as much from it as you can. So uh, it's it's not cheating to go and look back and say, okay, hey, what did I miss? And, uh, you know, and, and to maybe, you know, draw it and then copy it without looking and then, um, go back and, and look at the original again and then use that to adjust what you, what you did and, and do that a couple of times. Uh, I certainly didn't pick up everything you know, right away. Art Obra says, hey, can we get a Death Blow Punisher drawing in the future? Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm going to put that on the list. Absolutely. 
And Henry Jeremy says, Dave, how is your creator owned project coming along? We're all very curious and when you'll be able to tell us what percentage you, could you say com is complete? Uh, well over 90% is complete. I'm almost finished. Uh, and that will be actually very, very soon. Uh, and that is actually a, another big part of the pressure that I've, I've had just trying to make sure that I get everything finished. Um, whenever I'm working on one thing, I'm, I'm letting something else go. It's just the way it goes. Just tell me when I need you. Quit. Mm. No, quit. <laughs> <That's done. laughs> I can't read the name, but he says, David, your voice just got super clean for a moment. Is a microphone near or far? Uh, by the way, you sound good. Well, thank you. I'm actually using this is Meredith's microphone normally. So I'm holding it in my hand while Eric is using the microphone that I normally use. So maybe yeah, that thing's pure metal, so you got to hold it up. It's yeah, like I, a dumbbell. It is. So. This is a heavy microphone. This might be a better quality mic. I don't know. If you need me to quit, I can do that. You can move on to the parish. Right? Sheldon Martin says, hey, Dave, do your characters have powers? Blight and Blaze. They do. I don't really completely. So here's... <laughs> Sheldon, this is what I'm talking about when I say that I'm not a writer. Just when you're when you feel like you're done, just you know, let me know. We'll move on. Okay. Um, actually, I'm gonna have to set the microphone down in just a second. But uh, yeah, you can finish that. In they have time. powers. I don't really know very much about what any. I, I come up with with pictures that I like and I have a general idea, but beyond that, yeah, I leave that to a writer, and we haven't gotten that far. All right, I'm going to set the microphone down. I'm going to start getting our airbrush ready okay. for our initial pass with the airbrush. And uh, so I need to make some paint. Sure. Okay. All right. So to mix paint, I use these little cups. Uh, I'm going to use carbon black. We use Mars black. I ran out. So I'm using carbon black. If there's a difference, is it, whatever. It's still black. It'll be close enough. So I've got my Mars black, carbon black. I've got carbon black. Uh, I'm going to take my airbrush medium. We won't be doing this for all of the airbrushing. Later on, we'll be actually using airbrush paint. But for this, I'm going to use um, this mixture, largely because this is just what we do. So I'm going to mix that in there just about that much. I wanted to, you know, and you'll be able to see in just a minute if I have the right uh, amount of uh, medium in there once I get it mixed up. I'm using the the blunt end of the brush because then I don't have to clean it. Actually, I just spilled. All right. So if I can take it and dab it and it drips down, it's thin enough and it is not thin enough. It's dripping down, but it's going way too slow. So let me... Just dump a little more in there. Let's see if that'll do it. <laughs> you know what? I was giving Eric a hard time last night for <laughs> not adding enough. Let's just go for it. That's got to do it. There we go. That's much better. I don't want it too thin because it can start to sputter. All right. Airbrush. Is tangled. So I'm just going to dump it in the cup just like that. And the thing is all the way open right here. And so you can see it made a massive spray. And so what I want to do is tighten this down. Because this is single action, I don't have the ability to make it wider or smaller just, you know, with finger action. And I went way too tight. Still too much. That's a little better. That's too much. There we go. Okay. I'm going to hold, whoop. I'm going to get paint all over the back. I'm going to hold it pretty far away because I, I want to get a nice broad spray. And I'm just going to hit the whole thing like this. The reason I'm doing this is it is so much easier to work. First of all, this is giving the, the picture a nice texture. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's giving a nice little stippled texture, which I really like. I don't even care when that happens because it's just more texture. But um, it also is giving me essentially a toned paper. We're using black right now. I've also used blue. I've used um, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna can be a little risky because it's a very warm color, and I found that can give me a little bit of trouble here and there. But, uh, yeah. All right. Airbrush cleaner pot. We're done. I'm going to dump this out. This is where things slow down. I mean, it's pretty quick, but... 
Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> if you don't clean the airbrush at this stage, you're stuck with one that doesn't work. In a, yeah, in this a, is, in a few minutes. I learned this the hard way many times. All right, and so I'm just going to uh, just spray this out. Let me open this thing up all the way so it'll really spray. So this is going to be a two-step process. I'm going to do this twice. I'm going to do this once with the paint, and then we're going to hit it with the um, with the medium. So this is a hassle, but it's part of it. And uh, if nothing else, I'm not having to think right now. <laughs> you know, I can just sit here and clean this thing out. I'm going to hit it one more time. You can see that's pretty quick. Uh, Story of osmosis. This is a single action post mix tool. Uh, yeah, it's a single action bath, actually. Yeah. Super cheap airbrush, but it works great. Okay. So we're done. Now I'm going to grab another cup. This is going to be my medium. I'm going to take my ultra matte medium. I'm going to squeeze some out here. I want to try to not go too crazy because I always make way too much. And it's a tiny picture. So I got about that much. I'm going to take my, my mixture again. And my way of knowing whether I've got the right mix is exactly the same as it was before. I'm just going to swirl it around and I've still got paint on here. I should probably be careful not to. All right. So I'm going to keep going until this is well mixed up. And I'm going to dab it along the side and it's dripping down fast enough. It'll be fine. Yeah. So as mentioned before, this is going to seal everything even further. It's going to provide tooth for the paint and the colored pencils. So yeah. This is pretty, pretty necessary. So. Yes. And do not try this with a normal airbrush with yeah. like a more sensitive airbrush. I've got the biggest nozzle on this thing. Yeah, we're using a number five. I guess that's, yeah. a, that's a good thing to, to mention. We're using a num number five nozzle for the patch H. And I'm just going to hit it with a ton of this stuff. It is. It's cleaned out better, I guess. Yeah. I think I went with a bit of a better mix. All right. I already know I've got enough, but I've got so much in the airbrush. I, I feel like I want to use it. <laughs> okay. We're done. I'm going to dump out the rest here. And uh, I'm going to clean out my airbrush. It's the biggest hassle this whole deal. But uh, yeah, when this is done, you'll see why this is so... Uh, you know what? This is very similar. I have a feeling this is really... I'm putting it right under the microphone. Apologies, guys. Uh, Paulo Romero Art says the airbrush is awesome for effects. I use it with acrylic inks. You know, that's something I've got acrylic inks and I never use it that way. Uh, and Maddie Wolf says, does it smell? No, not really. I don't know. I don't think so. Um, some reducers like the 4011 reducer for pits. It's got a smell, but it's kind of a nice smell. Okay. If you're, uh, you know, cleaning with Windex or whatever, you know, yeah, it's going to have a smell, but it's not terrible. All right. Uh, I'm going to move the microphone. You know what? Um, Maybe I'll, I'm just going to hit mute so you guys don't have to hear this. Yeah, my sister asked if uh, did that throw a mist on the... Your mic is still on. Oh, okay. I can, I can still talk. Um, it's cloudy just because of the, of the polymer inside the solution, and that'll clear up as it dries. The paper will, will, will clear up. The cloudiness will go away. Uh, Darmic says that's too much work with spray paint. Yeah, and you can't get the level of control that we need with Oh, yeah. Spray paint. You can use spray paint, but try and get a surface like that. And, I, like, the fact is that Simon Bisley was using this, and he just doesn't admit it. I don't even care. Sue me. Don't You know what? Allegedly. <laughs> don't sue me. <laughs> but that's my suspicion. All right. Um, okay, yeah, it's your turn. Okay. I did that. So Eric's going to mix up some color. We got our palette right here, got all the paint ready to go, and he's going to put the base coat down. Am I doing this wrong? I don't know. I'm going to go this way. Okay. <laughs> then Jen Vesey says, Jen, it says uh, I need to find another place to practice airbrushing because my studio is right above my friend's apartment. I already wake him up, I woke him up once before. Yeah, that's a problem. And I've got a pretty quiet little box. I got this one recommended from Eric. 
You know what you can do, Dan? You can get a huge canister of air. We're dropping all the paint. <laughs> this is going to happen another five times tonight because my desk has a little bit of a slant and all the paint is just sitting on the surface. It just is what it is. I can't remember if we used this last night or not. Uh, yes, we did. So That was black. We, yeah, we muted it. Yeah. Now it's carbon black. So, so that is hooker's good. green. Yeah. This is an older Liquitex bottle, but it's the same color. I've had that bottle for screen. years, so we're yeah. lucky we're getting anything out of it at all. But yeah, you can you can use a um, a canister of air like uh, under pressure, and it won't make any noise. That's an option. Uh, our Mixi says, "What kind of compressor are you using?" Uh, I am using an Iwata. You know, that's a um, oh man, I can't remember what it's called. Smart Jet Pro. Smart Jet Pro. There we go. Let me just show what I'm doing here. No, I don't know the tinting strength of this. But Henry Jones says, says, "Dave, have you seen Alex Ross's Remedia esque Green Goblin? It's great. I've seen a Green Goblin from Alex Ross, which was great, but I'm not sure if it was that one." Okay, so what I'm doing is, uh, and here we go. With this, you know, let me put this up. There you go. That's the answer. <clears throat> Dan, that's what you need. And I don't think that they'd be that expensive. And there you go. Here we have from Tagamo Model Works. And good to see Tagamo here. It says uh, Struzan uses air tanks only for the same reason. No noise. And yeah. you know what? This stream, honestly, would be better if, if we had that. It would, because I'm sure you guys can kind of hear that cluttering in the background. But um, and Random Pat says, this is such a true Struzan approach. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's a big, big part of it. All of these illustrators, and this is something that is um, so frustrating for me, that this is an illustration um, method that is really well known among uh, artists that, that went to, you know, Art Center, uh, places like that in, in uh, the 80s or the 70s. Um, this isn't some kind of magic. But it's also something that is never just shared with the general public, which is so frustrating. And I have fought for years to figure this stuff out. It's really frustrating. Make sure to go nice and thin. Yeah. Cycle Pump says, my bulldog compressor that I got in the late 90s is pretty silent, and I want it has a line of silent compressors. Uh, on set for makeup touch-ups, we use air canisters. And yeah, I, I really do think an air canister is the way to go. Is it visible? I'm kind of bringing the paper down. Yeah, here, look which... at that. And see, okay, so what we're doing right now, I feel like I should tell you guys, we mix the paint. You guys saw that. We put a little bit of ultra matte medium in it. That's just because I like to really kind of continue that surface texture looks so well for um, for colored pencil, which we will be doing very, very soon. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it's also um, brought down really heavily with water. There's a lot of water in the paint. Because we have the surface that we put on there with matte medium, it's not soaking into the paper, so we can get a really, really nice, uh, smooth finish. Uh, there's no real paint strokes on there. It, it can be a bit of a challenge to learn uh, mm -hmm. exactly how much <laughs> device set up. The computer's talking to me. Um, how much paint to get in there? Because too much, and you'll start to cover your underdrawing. The point of this right now is really just to tint what we have. Uh, so we're tinting the face green. We're going with a very muted green um, because I don't look. I really want to bring the colors out for my lights. I want to start from a place that's a, like shadow. Generally, is is less saturated. So mm -hmm. yeah, when I said earlier, uh, going over some of these blacks, uh, you can't really see it on camera, but it is tinting it a bit green. Yeah, but that can always be fixed, you know, with colored pants, a little more paint if if you desire that. So. Liesl Huddleston says, um, how long have you guys been working on this method? It feels like it's been a year or so. Uh, we've been working on this method now for, I want to say two years, what'd you say? Two, maybe even two and a half. I don't, I don't know. But yeah. the thing is, the method has been changing over time. Like, it's really been refining as we go. Uh, and we have, the, I will say this, it won't stop here. But what we have now is totally predictable. It works every time. I think we're going to go with another code after that. Right? Yeah. Um, not the hair dryer. No, no, you just you yeah. got to do the ear anyway in his neck. Yeah, I forgot the ear last night too. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah, we're gonna give him a. Uh, Lance Boyer is here. Also, Rich Ware is here. He just has his. He is the Gordox pub. Is that right? <laughs> so good to see you guys here. 
Uh, Random Pat says, how do you decide which base coat for the colors? Um, just going for a desaturated shade. That's exactly right. It's just a desaturated shade. Here, let me get that stuff out of your way. You, the problem is you're I yeah. knocked over the stuff on the left. Yeah, I'm right-handed. Right. Yeah. Everything that's normally safe is not getting knocked over by yeah. me. So There's no winning. Kenny Wang says, I might give this method a try someday if I get an air spray. Kenny, you got to do it. I mean, his painting. Kenny, you do incredible painting. Um, and it's a tool. Like, do you need it? No. You know, uh, there's so many ways to to go about this. But uh, this is it's such an efficient method. Uh, and it's like a lot of things. You know, it's a headache using the airbrush. You use it, then you have to clean it, and you use it, you have to clean it. But um, it gives you effects that are very difficult and time-consuming to get in the other way. Uh, Sean Allen says, do these washers interact with ink? No, they don't, Sean. And the reason is yeah. we've used... We've just sealed it. We sealed it. And I don't know if you've been watching, but we sealed it with ultra matte medium mixed with um, uh, Liquitex uh, airbrush medium. And uh, we sprayed that on with a uh, patch airbrush. Uh, some of this paint hasn't dried yet. But just... Do you want to just hit it with the air dryer? Uh, Here. Yeah, probably. So it's a real risk. It's a real risk. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on. Okay. Um, if you go to paint a, a second coat on top of a thin, and I really like the idea of using a thin coat and then putting two coats on rather than trying to get it darker uh, right away. It's much more controllable, but. Uh, you can pick up and, and create like craters in the paint, which is a real headache. So you don't let it yeah, it can be very difficult to fix. Yes. Omar Mufti says, and I Mufti, I, I apologize, uh, Omar. He says, uh, "Hi, Dave. Just stopping in now. Thank you again for the critiques at Trificon. Wanted to ask you and Eric. Uh, oh, you moved here. Hold on." Uh, who are your current favorite artists? I'm a big, I'm big on Dan Mora and, and uh, Dyke Ruan at the moment. I'm not familiar with Dyke Ruan. He's you? very good. Yeah, I, I need to get out more. I love Dan Mora's work. Um, I need to check out uh, Dyke Ruan. Yeah, he's he's very 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 good. Yeah. Adversity Art has a five dollar super chat. Thank you very much, Adversity. Really appreciate it. He says, Dave, any tips on working through Frame Perspective Volume One book? Uh, it, yeah, you know, I, okay, I do have tips for that. My number one tip would be to um, learn how to use a grid on your paper. So when you you are working on paper, if you're working on paper, as opposed to working on a screen, you want to um, find your points, uh, get comfortable with, with taping a paper to your paper, so you can use a nice long ruler and, and get a grid in and get a nice tight grid. I've got some videos on my channel about how to do that. It's a massive hassle to do. I hate it every single time, but it makes the perspective so much faster because the alternative is to refine your perspective points every time you want to draw a perspective point. It's a nightmare. Uh, and if you learn how to do that, you can take what he does there and then um, you can uh, very quickly put it into practice you can see where his points are and set up your grid and then and then use it that's what i would recommend doing just it makes things much easier that looks great <clears throat> all right so, so that's our base coat for his face i feel like i want to get purple out the way okay so it's generally a bit trickier but lancer boy says what did you use for the gray tones it's all just black so there's no gray at all that gray in the back like the, the whole picture looks like it's got a, a like it's toned paper that's actually just airbrush with black paint. Would you spill it? <laughs> oh, the whole know. thing came apart. Yeah. <laughs> Greg out starter card says, Hey Dave, great to see you again. Did you get my email with the updated address? Yes, I did. And I've given it to my art dealer and it is coming. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, we've got everything we need. So thank you. Is that going to come out? Oh no, it's doing what? Okay. Hold on. This is going to be okay, uh, interesting. We have to shake this, but I don't know what's going to I'm going to see if I can find another blue. This thing's popped up. So this thing, uh, the lid just came off, and if I shake it, I don't want to th throw ultramarine blue all over Dave's studio. So. One second. I have no idea how that ah. happened. All right, crisis averted. Okay. 
And this isn't this isn't fluid, so this should be good. Yeah, it'll be way easier to use. I've been using that fluid stuff for a while. And so that one looks like it's a bit biased to red, but it doesn't matter. That's actually a good thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah, because we're using it to make purple. Yeah. So we're going to be mixing this with red and then just a little bit of black. Uh, just because, again, we want it to be fairly unsaturated for the base. I mean, I almost wonder with purple, I, I find when we paint purple, it has a real tendency to be too unsaturated. So we might be better off to not use black. But I'll leave that to you. Yeah, let's just see what happens here. <clears throat> Adam with four says, hey, Dave, could you do an Omni-Man drawing for a stream, especially since it's built for the next season? Uh, Invincible was re recently released. Yeah, actually, that's going to be a lot of fun. I did Omni-Man. You did Omni-Man and Invincible, actually. That's right, but I didn't do Omni-Man kind of fun. So yeah. that makes it red. It's too bad. <laughs> and the problem is you're going to end up with a massive pile. There we go. Yeah, very good. <laughs> when we did the test last night, we ended up with a pile. You should see it. It's massive I'm trying to get the purple because the red is so much more powerful than the blue. Uh, Sprawl the Brawl says, with this process, do you prefer fluid acrylic? Um, sure. I don't really actually have a preference. The thing is, our acrylic painting is... Is that better? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that looks perfect. Right. Our acrylic painting is... Um, Fairly basic here. We're just we're doing a rough end. Uh, so if I go to the store and I need paint of you know whatever particular color and I can't find it in fluid, I'll, I'll pick fluid. But if I can't find fluid, I'll I'll use the heavy body and it works just as well. Yeah, yeah. You can also use heavy body in the airbrush if you had to. You just go to use enough reducer or medium to. Uh, Greg L. Sidebar says uh, he's hoping I could do the immortal from Invincible, and actually I would have a blast doing that. That's the guy. He's voiced by uh, um, Joe no, Joe Rogan. You know who I mean, right? Uh, Seth Rogen. Is yeah. That right. Uh, Ellen the alien is Seth Rogen. Oh, see, Although he may have done more voices, I'm not. I'm not sure. Who's he? Uh, who's he immortal then? Uh, I think that's man. I don't want to spoiler alert anyone, but so he, I, just don't he, I think he was I one of the seen, Guardians. I haven't seen season two, so. Yeah. The Gordox Pub uh, <laughs> says, uh, if I need it, then I use water. On Michael Whalen's advice, uh, it dries faster and gives you time to put another coat of wash over it sooner. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it does. Yeah, and but, uh, we actually have done this using just water also. There's really no reason why not. Yeah, I, you can have adhesion problems. But yeah, I mean, you can, you can if you're more comfortable using water, then definitely go for it. Yes. I, I can't say that I've ever had. Have you had this before? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, but that was when we first started with this process, and uh, um, I was getting a lot of pickup. But um, we have a vote of confidence from Gabriella Bradley, who says this looks great already. So thank you very much. And Sheldon Martin says, "Hey, Dave, you've been riding your bike this uh, summer? Yeah, as much as I can. I was out on it for you know ten minutes a couple days ago, but as much as I can get out there." I didn't smudge some of it, but I should be we went to a, a breakfast place. And uh, Meredith has gotten a lot more comfortable. My wife uh, has gotten a lot more comfortable riding on the back. So she uh, she came on the back. <clears throat> the Gordox pub says, I use golden opens, which are slow drying anyway. I, I've used, yeah, we've tried that. We didn't like it. Very yeah, much. I, now I'm, that's not to say. I'm going to cover this. Uh, sure, whatever. Whichever you want. Um, that's not to say that they're bad. That is to say that we could make them work because it's such a different product. Like they start to work more like oil paint Yeah, and oil paint is a struggle. For we, me. Yeah. We really like to paint in, in layers. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll have to do another layer of that. Yeah, for sure. Air dryer. Yeah. Warm? Yep. Yeah, it gets a bit warm, but toasty. Oh, okay. Bob says, uh, thank you so much for making YouTube. 
Well, he said, thanks for making, I'm, I'm making it <laughs> <laughs> for making YouTube content. It's been very helpful. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to do. And Paul Essenson says, I just purchased the Olivetti course. They had it at like 80% off. Uh, you know what? It is worth it at 200% markup, but that's great that you got it for a good price too. It's a great course. We got so much out of it. That course is when, that's what started this. That's yes. that's why we are where we are right now doing this was because of that. So Yeah, absolutely. Henry Jammer says, uh, to honor John Romita Sr. on Monday Night Draw, could you add Daredevil's enemy, the Gladiator, to the list? Have you ever seen Simon Bisley's Daredevil versus Gladiator? I have. Uh, I'm pretty sure. He had like a, a saw hands. He's cutting through wood. Gladiator, is that right? If it's not, then I don't know if I have seen it. But uh, yeah, it sounds like it'd be a cool one to do. So after this step is where the magic's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, Cycle Pump says, uh, I bet you guys would have uh, fun with watercolor pencil, uh, pencils. Really versatile medium. Yes. At the same time. Now, it, the reason why we're working with what we're working and not something that, like watercolor pencils, they work beautifully and, and artists use them amazingly. I really, really like that I can put this, like this paint that we're putting down right now is 100% permanent. It won't come back up no matter what we do. It's there. And so it becomes a surface that we're now going to be working on. With watercolor, if I add water to it or mess with it. One more. I think we might. Yeah, it's just a little lighter. Okay. Yeah, let's just do it once more. Oh, right. Sorry, hair dryer. Here we go. I'm on hair dryer duty. <laughs> So if you really want to have fun with watercolor pencils and, and acrylic, um, put your watercolor pencil down and then paint with medium on top of that. Well, the only way you'd be able yeah. to do that is with an airbrush. No, no. Oh, no. I mean, if you use your pencils and then kind of what we tried. When you yes. Know, but yeah. you would have to put the medium down over it with an yes, airbrush. Yes, yes, so yes. Otherwise, it'll pick the watercolor yep. pencil. You yes. Can pick right back. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the Gord Ox Pub says... Um, watercolor reactivates acrylics dry and turn into vinyl, which is, which is true. And I like the vinyl. Now the vinyl can be a real problem because if you paint thickly with uh, acrylic, you'll create a surface that is effectively impossible to paint or to uh, use color pencil on. So that's why we're going with very thin coats. And it's also why we're using um, uh, ultra matte medium in the paint, in the mix. Uh, it, you don't need ultra matte for this mix. But it means that every coat has a nice little bit of tooth to it. And it the whole idea is to make sure that this supports the colored pencil as well as possible, which is going to be the next step in just a minute. <clears throat> and Gordox Pub says, James Gurney was saying acrylics were invented to paint on uh, movie cells. I did not know that. And we're losing dark air in New Vegas. He's got to go, but he's going to come back and watch it later. So. I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and I hope that uh, you check out the, the rest, and I hope you give it a try. Ray Keen says, is inking hard? I've thought of it like tracing, basically, but I haven't had feedback from a comic artist. You think that coloring and penciling, I think the coloring and penciling would be way harder. Uh, you know what? The fact is that there are challenges with penciling that you don't run into with inking. Uh, composition is, is a big one. And um, uh, so, yes, it can be more difficult in that sense. But then inking also presents challenges that penciling doesn't present. It, it is a very difficult medium to do it really well. Uh, it, it's it, it's very hard. Um, you need to be able to pull a really really clean line, uh, long curves that don't wiggle or or shake. It, it takes time to get that level of comfort. You also need to know how to draw because you need to be able to, to interpret what a pencil is doing. No matter how tight a penciler is, there's always going to be some things that are left. Uh, for the judgment of the inker, and you need to understand what you're looking at. All right. I think we have enough to work with. Yes. All right. So we're going to do a little yellow for his eyes and a little yellow ochre for his, well, yellow ochre for his eyes, right? I think so. Yeah, yellow, and yellow and then yellow and black for his teeth. Yes. <clears throat> so yeah. Jimmy Reyes says it looks amazing already. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Um, so we're using yellow oxide here. Yes. Which is yellow ochre effectively it's the same yeah 
just a different name, but yeah, it's yellow ochre. Uh, and so we're going to use straight up yellow ochre for his eyes because we want those to be fairly bright. We'll end up. <sighs> <laughs> we're going to try again. And I'm mixing a uh, matte medium with it just to uh, just to preserve some more tooth. That's so. such a tiny little spot. It's impossible to do what you're doing right now. I'm, like, I'm watching to see if you can do it. <laughs> there we go. We're going to mix it on the paper. You should just do that. What I'm worried about is this uh, this water tumping out. Oh. So I've got one eye on the water and one on the paint. So that's just a straight up yellow ochre. I'm going to put that on the eye. We'll do a couple of coats. We're going to ultimately end up using some orange in the eye and also some brown for the shadow and uh, some proper yellow, some brighter yellow to really bring it out. But this is going to be our base coat. Yeah, we try not to use fully saturated colors. That's, so that's why yellow ochre is being used here. Yeah. Stumpy the Tree says, oh, I hate it when I accidentally mix the paint. Yeah, I, it's inevitable. And Adam with the four is also going to head off too. It's quite late where he is in England. But he's going to finish watching the stream uh, later. And we're looking for, well, I'm saying I'm looking forward. I won't be here. The stream will be up. But I'm glad you're going to come back and, and finish off. So this is a first for me, mixing on paper. So I'm actually enjoying it. <laughs> Joshua Book says, paper towels for the win. And uh, Marlo says it's so unforgiving. It is really not. You'd be really surprised. It's. Yeah, I, I want to say quickly, um, yellow oxide or yellow ochre is a very um, opaque paint, so you have to be very careful to not paint it too thick. Yeah, you can see it's covering blacks uh, a lot. Yeah. Which a is lot not a problem heavier. because color pencil will fix that. I guess we'll just have to do the gums with color pencil. Might, uh, yeah, we, might no, be the safest. We could. His gums, there's very little of it that you can see. We could mix a little bit of dark red paint and paint those in. We'll just do it with colored pencil. It's so small. And Psychopomp says, my favorite palette is a black ceramic tile. Uh, you know, I what I have are uh, just plastic plates that I got from a, a craft store. Yeah. Good. If, if you want another layer, we'll just need the hair dryer and this. You're good. No, I think we're good. All right. Ready to move on. All right. Tag, All right. tag David in again. All right, we're going to switch. Let me move this up. Otherwise, that's going to be a problem. This is sliding bad. <laughs> I'm going to put it up here. There we go. Okay. Okay. So it's called the pencil time. Yeah, the teeth oh, I won't do those right away. So for my greens, we kind of pre-selected these. The fact is, I've got a million colored pencils and you can put a lot of work into trying to figure out exactly which ones you want. But ultimately what I want, uh, this is a really light green. It's a bit of a darker green. This green right here is darker still, but it's also fairly muted and it works really well. We actually, um, we used a really intense dark green that we fought with quite a bit. And I've got this one, which is fairly blue. Uh, I don't know if that's really ideal. It's it's much cooler than the other greens, but it's a, a good kind of a mid, and it gives it a little color. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this one here because I want to kind of start coming out of the Tag team painting. Yep, it's a new sport. Uh, and I don't want these... Uh, wrinkles and everything to be completely dark. They're way too dark up in the light here. This whole, I'm imagining this whole area here is kind of lit. So having completely dark uh, crevices and shadows is more than I want. So I'm yeah. starting just by starting to kill some of those back. I can always bring those back darker also. Yeah, I will say that um, it's good to have those those ink marks down. It helps with landmarks, helps with guidelines. Uh, yep. uh, for this very purpose here, what David's doing is, is knocking that back. But the fact that they're there, you know, you now have a roadmap to uh, to turn forms and uh, yeah. and I'm going I'm going pretty light because uh, yeah, get wax build up pretty yes, and I can always account for wax buildup by just going on with another layer of my medium, but obviously I don't want to be doing that every ten seconds. So I go noise nice noise <laughs> nice and light with this, and uh, I'm just kind of just dusting this in really. Uh, 
just softening things out, softening into my black there. I don't want some of those hard shapes of black. Dan DeSantis has entered the chat. Oh, no. Uh, is it awesome? I didn't realize you were actually paying together. Did Dave finally leave his house? Or did you go visit Eric? Uh, I'm visiting Dave at the moment. <laughs> oh, I can't believe yeah. I've... And, so... uh, good to have you, Dan, and congrats on the on the Marvel Masterpiece uh, Upper Deck set. It is fantastic. It is. So it, Dan DeSantos, I'm sure so most of you guys know this, but he is uh, an incredibly accomplished, world-renowned painter, uh, an incredible oil painter, and... Also, he's we've been fortunate enough to have him on the channel a couple of times, and we've learned so much from him. Uh, and yeah, this is now this is a little pressure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely check out uh, Dave's Mar uh, Dan's Marvel masterpiece set. Uh, you can you can also visit him on uh, dandesensors.com. I, I definitely I recommend you go there. And also, um, did you know that Dan's got a Patreon right now where he's actually showing the process of him painting those those paintings so, he recorded everything yeah so very excited to you know to have that available for people to uh, yeah to see so. <laughs> he says that you got the right on my tail i can't believe i informed you already well ah uh, yeah <laughs> it's amazing work dan is too nice yeah, excited to see it uh did you have to clean out the airbrush again after that matte medium layer yes that <clears throat> the matte medium will <laughs> that'll clog your airbrush super fast uh, minutes and it's, and it's clogged so you you have to clean it right away yeah now i have a more thorough process for cleaning it i've got a um a sonic cleaner i just take it apart and dump it in there and get it all cleaned out when i need to but um yes i do it after every color just because I have learned that you can get lazy with it, and then the headache that you end up dealing with is so much worse. I'm trying to get it to work again. We actually we went to visit uh, uh, Dan Lassard, um yesterday. We're going again tomorrow. I I took a bunch of uh, uh, pictures, and we took some video there. Yeah, we some video well. So we're going to be posting some of that up. Um, he's kind of teaching us some some more intricate airbrush technique, which has been really great. Uh, it, but he, I, I went to his house, this is months ago, uh, and he fixed my airbrush for me after I, I had it sit in like a brick for months. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and now move up to, these are my options. I'm going to go to this one, not all the way to the, the brighter one. And this is a pretty intense green. So I, I have choices. I have other greens that are not quite as so intense, but I really want to start punching this thing up. Yeah, the nice thing about this green is it's it's got a bit of yellow in it, which, uh, you know, when green starts lightening, it kind of goes that way on the color wheel. So <clears throat> this is a this is a good step for adding adding light. Well, certainly in a warm light, especially. Yeah. Warm light. Uh, hey Eric, did you get to ride on Dave's bike? No, no, I. Yeah, I don't, don't want to wreck his bike or anything. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I got to ride the uh, the. Uh, the lawnmower, so I'm perfectly fine with that, which is a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. For oh, yeah. Heaven. Yeah, I keep saying how much I love cutting the grass. It's all because it's not work. You're on a riding lawnmower. No, just tooling around. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. I wish there was some more tall grass. I think yep. yeah. So I'm still going on fairly light. And uh, I, I want to be it. Now, and I can even go into some of my darks quite a bit with a lighter pencil, and it starts to blend. Um but I'm going on fairly light now, and I have some lighter tones that I can use, which we will. But if I went really heavy with this right now, it would make it very difficult for me to go lighter from here. Uh, e quarter mark, I think, uh, asks, what kind of pencils are you using? Uh, we're using a mixture of uh, Caran Dash Luminance as well as um, Prismacolor Premier, which are both wax-based pencils. Uh, we really like the the luminance but you know if you don't have that um the prisma color is just fine yeah oh yeah the only the big difference between the luminance and the prisma color is these are much less prone to breaking all the time uh kevin mandible asks, was this all colored pencils tonight no um basically using the colored pencils now just to initially round the forms after putting down the acrylic base layers over the ink yeah everything pencil. everything aside from right here is all just paint and we're now moving into yeah. And then after this, we'll, you 
then we'll we'll do some more work with the airbrush. And this uh, is something that really um, is very much. This is how uh, uh, Bisley and, and all those guys worked quite a bit, and uh, Drew Struzan very much works this way. Now he tends to go in a more rendered approach where he's he's actually using a line, and I want something more painterly. Um, it really just depends on the look that you're you're going for. Uh, asking if I've ridden any horses, no. Uh, but your daughter has. Yes, yes, my daughter's ridden one or two. I think she rode Stevie. She rode Stevie. Okay, and also Monster, I think, right? I don't know. I, don't know. I know she rode Stevie. Yeah, yeah, she's having a blast here. She's in her element. Stevie's a little mini horse. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a good choice for someone that she's she's pretty young still, so. He's nice and small and low to the ground, and he's very, very docile. Uh, Henry's asking, how am I liking Canada so far? Yeah, I love it. Having a blast. Uh, enjoying the food. The food is great. Uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Everyone's polite and friendly. And, yeah. and we say sorry a lot. Yeah, everyone says sorry a lot. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I catch myself saying it sometimes. Like, Henry's, oh, Henry's in Canada too, right? I don't know that, actually. I don't know if he is. I think so. E. Quartermark again says, loved your Conan stream with Watts. That was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, Kevin, Eric, are you drawing along as well? Uh, we're, we're tag teaming this, <laughs> this piece. So Dave does something, I do something, Dave does something. So we just... Uh, Tag team in it. Yep. So yeah, I just took over again, actually. Yeah. Yeah, this is Dave. I can't do this with my left hand. That's for sure. He probably doesn't have a green shoulder, but he's got a green shoulder here. Did we do purple last time? Did do it? What? Did we do purple? Shoulder? No, it was green there too. I'm gonna lighten this up with green. Part of the reason for that, I, I really should have used a little more, but I'm going to use blue. He has that nostril there too, which I yeah. forgot you, I'm not sure. That's ah, fine. We'll get it. We can add the room Yeah, I'm doing that now. I want to add some green to it because while I'm using blue, I, I want the base color to still kind of be in there. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Yeah. All right. A little more in his chin. And this is almost done this like okay well i still have a more to do but me doing this with paint and i can do this with paint but the amount of blending and hassle, hassle that i go through to get rid of edges is a lot whereas with colored pencil i just kind of slap this in and it works nice and fast yeah and once we hit it with the airbrush again it, it really transforms it even more yeah so now i'm going to go on with a bit of a brighter color um and you can see it's it's actually barely going on. So what I'm going to do is switch to white. This Prismacolor white actually is pretty good. At, and the, my, you can see how it's already working better. Uh, and I can tint the white with uh, with green later. Yeah, and it's good to come in now because it's mixing with the wax as it has already been applied. So yeah, yep. it's really nice. And the Prismacolors just kind of crumble more, which is a hassle, but they actually work better. I find the white and black I like better with color for whatever reason i don't know you know what none of it really matters ultimately it's yeah uh, bob says the blending on the nose is good yeah and and the reason why it's working so well is because of all the prior steps that we took up until this point so um you know in a lot of cases it almost it almost feels like oil in a, in, a, in a way you know the way that you can blend it so yeah uh, definitely go through the steps that we showed do you guys use wet on wet to blend paint or multiple layers? Um, when we just paint, uh, basically, no, it's not wet on wet, <laughs> it's wet on dry. But uh, we, we use two, you know, two paint brushes, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's not really wet on wet, it's more of a blend. Yeah, we mm -hmm. use a, we use a paintbrush to apply the paint and then a second damp brush to help uh, spread and blend the paint. So. Yeah, like when Dan DeSantos paints, it, or when Eric gives paints, they have a great deal of precision with their color and their tone. And they, and you need to have that to really paint at the highest level with oil paint. Uh, it doesn't, it, there's a, just a level of mastery that we don't have. And so this is kind of in some ways, um, 
it's a bit of a cheat because uh, I can get so much out of this and build to what I want rather than just being able to throw Because you can see I'm, I'm building up my lights as opposed to just hitting it right away. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever have that ability. I just feel so much more comfortable doing this. I will say I'm I'm going to be going to visit the uh, Watts Atelier this fall, I think in November. And I'm going to be uh, spending a week and, and really learning a lot there. Um, so, you know, we'll see how that goes. I think uh, all of these things, every time we get one of those experiences, it always changes what we do a little bit. And, yeah. and the fact is, this is it's it's a process of learning as much as possible constantly i want that to be a little darker i'll get there but uh secret of injury would you ever use white gel pin for highlights here uh, we like using the posca uh pin uh we showed that uh we showed that a bit earlier um it just yeah. seems to work a whole lot better with with this process and you know you can ink over it it's very opaque now i'll say this i've never used a gel pen to try it, like for this stuff here. It works. Um, the nice thing about Posca is it's acrylic, so it's not a departure from what we put down in, in the medium that we're using right now. So yeah. it tends to adhere very well. Mike Choi. Mike Choi. Says, uh, so good. Oh, good to have you here. Yeah, I got to catch up with Mike actually quite a bit in San Diego. It was nice to see him and nice to see you here, Mike. Thank you for coming. Mike is a, um, a very, very good uh, oil painter. He's a longtime comic artist too. I'm sure you guys are a lot uh, very familiar. He's he's very well known for uh, X23 over at Marvel, and he's been doing a lot of oil painting, like beautiful stuff, like fine art, you know. Let's see, uh, Artoberist. Yeah, ask ask a question again. Sorry, there's there is a lot of questions. Apologies if that was missed. Now, I hope you guys, <laughs> this has been a buildup to get to this point where we can start to actually model out the picture and, and start to make it look like something. Uh, and the temptation is really strong to just go ahead and, you know, jump right into, you just want to start getting those tones in. But like I said, this is a very um, predictable, repeatable, and uh, uh, versatile process. I think that's what I said in the thumbnail. But yeah, I can I can do this pretty confidently it's going to work well every time I'm, I'm not going to have massive fails which is what kept happening to me before i've been painting for years but i would just i'd have a painting work and then the next thing would be a disaster and i just it was like this high wire act every time uh and now the way that i'm working it's and this is what you need in order to be um doing anything consistently you need a, a consistent approach that you know will work Henry says that there's green that blends into the eyes. Uh, there isn't. That's yellow that's over the black, which makes a huge shift to green. So there wasn't any bleeding, but we'll fix that later when we come in and uh, finish the eyes. So. Yeah. Um, I don't like that I'm using a lot of white right now because it's, it's a cooler color than what I would like. I'd like it to be a little more yellow, but... But the white actually lends itself to being toned very, very well. And I can just start slapping in shapes with uh, sound effects. Yeah, sound effects help. It's not yes. very important. Information. Um, my choice is, oh man, I wish I could watch this with sound. I'm in my kid's room as he sleeps. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, We're talking about you too, Mike. Uh, Maybe someone can tell Mike that. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can't type right now. Yeah, we can type, but he, yeah, we definitely have it on. It's saved after the live stream ends, so he, he can go back and watch it with sound if he wants to. Uh, Henry Dermix says, no worries, and they say sorry because he's Canadian. So, Henry is. <laughs> there you go. He's Canadian. I didn't know that. I really should have. Uh, Lowell Lucas Jr. asks, will you both be attending Colorado Springs Comic Con again? Uh, I never got to never got to get that portfolio review due to the crowds. Is there another way to get a review? Um, Colorado Springs, it was a busy show. Um, I am sure that I will be back. Uh, I, 
was in San Diego on the, the West Coast this year. I think that might be my only real West Coast show. I'm not sure. Uh, but, okay, you know what? I'm, like, hemming and hawing about shows. Uh, someone else asked if I would be doing portfolio reviews again on the stream. And, yes, it's we haven't done it for ages. I've been promising to do it for ages, and we just haven't. And uh, I actually would really kind of like to do it again. It's been too long. So um, I, I'm going to start planning for that. Uh, I have guests also that I'm dying to bring on, and it's it's like this never time for everything. So, but yeah, I think it's uh, portfolio reviews are an important part of the channel that we've been really neglecting. And so, yeah, I will, I will do that. Uh, Mr. Hyde asks, I missed the acrylic part. What brand of paints do you use? Do you have to mix or do you just use water to dilute them? Uh, we're using a mix of different paints, uh, golden and Liquitex. This one's Liquitex. Also Liquitex. I've got, uh, this one was golden. Uh, they're they're basically fluid, most of them, because that's what I tend to buy. Um, I do find that for what we did, um, the heavy body works just as well. Yeah, we, we, we dilute it down using medium and water uh, so that we can have thin layers and glaze them over the under, under dry. Um, sound is slightly ahead of the picture not that it actually matters but that pencil sharpener noise gave me a scare <laughs> <laughs> here it comes again uh ricardo garcia the speed is lightning fast totally going to try this technique looks awesome Phil, as well um <clears throat> doing what we're doing here really uh you can get stuff done very quickly yes yeah so, and uh, we're going to continue this like what time is it 9 41. We're, we're doing pretty well we can keep going and we will keep going. We're going to do some more airbrush and we're really going to finish this to a high level of finish because I want to go through the whole process. But strictly speaking, uh, I could have this finished in just a few minutes. Just, you know, I'm going to take out a little bit more of this color now and just start to kind of come back in here and this will soften out some of the whites. Uh, yeah, and also, when we, again, when we come with the airbrush, it's, you know, it's going to change it even more. Yeah. Just provide more form and... But it's a bit of a back and forth. I don't want my white to be too stark. And you can see I'm already kind of bringing a lot of color back into that white. When I tried to go with a lighter uh, colored pencil on its own, it really wasn't working. That white, it's like a magic colored pencil. It really does work well that way. And then I'll, I'll hit the cowl as well afterwards. Yes, yeah, so as soon as I'm finished with the face, Eric's going to take over, do the cowl. I'm going to do the eyes. Eric's going to do the teeth. Do you want to do the teeth? Uh, yeah. Do you want to do the eyes or the teeth? Okay. Uh, let's see. These last, what makes using the airbrush different from just painting a thin layer of matte medium? With the airbrush, you can get really nice uh, gradients. Um, uh, no. Uh, okay. Well, sorry. Okay. Okay. It depends on what you're using the airbrush for. If you're using it to paint, yes, you get really nice gradients. We use the airbrush to put on our medium earlier on, and we will maybe do that again, depending on um, where we are. But we do that because. Uh, if I paint with a big brush medium over top of this, it's going to really start to pick up some of the colored pencil and kind of move it around. Not too much, but more than you might think. And it can be really frustrating to watch your whole picture go kind of gray. Whereas with the... Um, yeah, and also spraying particulates helps with tooth as well. It, it does, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I don't want to take this too much further. I, I think we're going to... How much faster was this than the last time, too? I used a green that was really inappropriate, and it, yeah, we had kind of it was a real problem. I have a Posca. Let's give him a nice big a little shine there, shine there, one here, and soften it a little bit with my tan. I don't want to get too carried away because these are really uh, not, but yeah, that'll do. Okay, um, I'm going to get up. Eric's going to go ahead and... Uh, Work on the cowl. Work on the cowl. All right. I didn't realize the sharpener was right here. Oh, <laughs> you're right by that being that blast in <laughs> people's ear traps. You're definitely better at making the behind the chair move than I am. Yeah, I think if, if one of us moves forward, then it's easier. But... I'm going to hit this again. So we may want to. <laughs> Dallas and Roland says, do you have advice for a young artist who wants to be a comic artist in the future? Uh, I have a few pieces of advice. 
my number one and favorite piece of advice is uh, so we have a dark dark purple, light purple, and medium purple. We could tell you the names of the purple if you you know, but I, I gotta be honest, I don't think it's all that helpful to do that because you really want to eyeball your colors uh, and and use kind of what works, and you want to experiment. And so yeah, you want a medium, a dark, and a light. You really only need three tones to uh, get everything you want. Okay, so to be uh, advice for someone that wants to be a comic artist, you need to first of all draw all the time. And you need to draw intelligently. You need to um, not just draw pinups. You need to work on anatomy, uh, do studies from other artists, and uh, draw to learn. And uh, another piece of advice is to not give up because there will be times when you'll want to give up. All of us have been there. Um, so you, you need to push through those times. And you also really need to look at what is happening in the market, what artists are are being successful, what are what look is kind of current right now and be very aware of that and try to work that kind of uh, look into your work because it makes it much easier to get work from an editor when they feel like you're doing the kind of work that they know uh, fans are already proven to have been buying. And Dennis Kelly says work, work on the boring stuff. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, it's foundation and foundation can be boring. And by foundation, we mean uh, proportion, basic anatomy, um, uh, basic perspective, getting all those things working, it's very, very important. And it's easy to neglect that because it's so much more fun to draw pin up. You need to work on the boring things. And Henry Jeremy says, uh, Dave and Eric, when building layers with the colored pencils, do you always go from dark to light? Um, not always. Not always, but yeah. as a general rule. Uh, so all of my darks, all of my... Uh, uh, blacks from you know the original underpaint, uh, they're underdrawing, the under inking, I guess. Uh, I need to soften those out into the light and then build that toward light. So I, I generally do that first, and then I work toward the light. So it's a bit of a light to dark or dark to light. And Ray can ask if I've ever worked in an anime kind of a style. I really haven't. No, I'm I'm more of a you know traditional kind of a comic book artist. I think it'd be a lot of fun, but I haven't really done that. <clears throat> and Kevin Mandevil says, Dave, would these full color headpieces be available for future commissions? Uh, sort of, <laughs> I love doing them. They're pretty quick to do actually. Like this will, this is actually gonna ultimately, believe it or not, take quite a bit longer than if uh, we were just sitting down and doing it because we're kind of explaining and we're going back and forth too. And that, you know, it really kind of takes you out of the game and you have to get back into it. So it's fairly quick, but at the same time, uh, I'm so busy, it's difficult to take on commissions at all. I, I don't know uh, if Eric is gonna be doing any commissions along these lines, Eric. Is that oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, I've been thinking about it a lot and uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun to do that. So there you go. I can't remember what other purple we used last night. And Artsy Bible Nerd says, hello there. We have Artsy Bible Nerd here, good to see you. And Greg L. Static Arc says, honestly, been feeling like giving up lately. Uh, yeah, you know, we all get that. It's just, it's natural to, to get there. Um, it, it's, a, it's a tough thing. Uh, working in the indie entertainment medium, I'm, I'm sure. Um, but I, I hold to it that the, the biggest defining difference between the people that make it and the people that don't are the people that don't give up. It doesn't matter that you feel like giving up or even that you have to pull back for just a little bit, just for your own, you know, kind of mental well-being, just to kind of get a little perspective, but uh, just don't quit. And Sheldon Martin says, is there a way to make the more uh, the boring stuff fun? <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, it, to me, the boring stuff kind of was fun a lot just because I, I loved um, looking at an, an artist that did like an arm, for instance, really well that I, I really liked and I, I liked just how it worked and just doing studies of it until I could do it myself and then making that part of my own, you know, kind of uh, arsenal that always has been a lot of fun for me. Uh, and the card is uh, Sean Paris. That's what size it is. 
six by nine. I think it'd be probably smaller than that. Would you say, Eric? I don't know. I don't know what size it is. And I don't. You know what? I think six by nine is probably pretty accurate. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Six by nine. <laughs> I don't know. Well, five by seven or six by nine. It's relatively okay. small though. Like we're not giants, so you know you can kind of gauge by the size of our hands. Uh, Daryl Lawson says he was curious if there's a reason for not blending with a light yellow green uh, pencil on the right side highlight. The reason is because I want to go very blue with that. And uh, I, I don't want to go with so much green that I make it difficult to put my blue down. Uh, I really should have actually just put the blue in right now. I just kind of forgot, but we'll get there. It'll take, you know, 10 seconds to put that in. And Dennis Kelly says, for the boring stuff, I usually divide the tasks into, into a tournament chart. Uh, start with the most boring and end with the least boring. And uh, he, I can't pronounce, I'm sorry. But he says, the boring stuff, you can't build a, a good house without a solid foundation. Yeah. And you know what? It's so much of, of how we're doing this picture right now is we're, we're trying very much to work on a solid foundation uh, to build this picture. And so... It's it's starting with a drawing, making sure that's that's solid, and then getting a good base coat down, um, getting our our uh, base colors down, and then building from there. If we just started going in with the with the finished colors, we would have a much more difficult time at best and a massive failure at worst. Probably a massive failure. And Liesl Hedelson says, is that a gray or a lav uh, lavender colored pencil? It seems quite desaturated. Yeah, it's lavender. It doesn't show, like this looks pretty creamy on there, but this is actually a, uh, let's see. Well, gray lavender. <laughs> it's gray. <laughs> so, there yes. You, uh, you know, what? we're not worried okay. very much about how gray it is, though, Liesl, because we are going to be able to hit this with a little bit of airbrush uh, before we're done. And we can saturate this up to like a cherry. I mean, it's crazy the amount of saturation you can get in no time with an airbrush. You'll be surprised. We're actually going to have to be very careful with it to not get too carried away. Kevin, Kevin Mandeville says, so both the light and the darker colors are being used to build uh, folded in textures on top of each other. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, it, it's, um, it's kind of like... Uh, I would liken it a little bit to tile painting with oil painting. Um, you're, you're building up tiles of, of light and dark in order to uh, build your picture. That's such a terrible answer. I'm sorry. I don't know how to, some things are easy to, to draw or to, to, you know, to do and very difficult to explain. Roselle Francisco says, how do you find a specific style? Your specific style will be largely informed by the artists that you look at in order to learn. Uh, so, you know, really in, in a lot of ways, uh, looking for a style, I think is in my opinion, not a necessary thing to do. You find artists that, that do the kinds of things you really want to do and you learn as much from them and make sure to, you know, learn from a range so you don't end up just being too close to any one artist. But uh, yeah, that's, that's how you do it. Uh, Random Pat says, do you have any insight into the approach that someone like Gabriel Delato would take? Uh, Gabriel is definitely much more uh, thin washes of paint as opposed to colored pencil. I'm sure he uses some. I'm actually not sure that he uses some. But he definitely, he's more of a painter approach where this is a bit more of a mixed media approach. He does use airbrush definitely to augment his work also. So uh, um, it's a bit of a different approach. He's, he's more of a traditional painter approach. And what we're doing here is really more of a... Um, uh, mid to late century uh, illustration approach. And Henry Jammer says, I'm just curious who you guys use that bright purple. The color I'm talking about is already sprayed on the table under Eric's right hand. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we will. <laughs> yeah, I've got the, I've got the airbrush paint right there and we'll just, hit that with uh, some some thinner and, and spray it over it and then it will, it'll bring it together quite a bit and it will saturate it a little bit. And 
Vivan says, I just wanted to come here and say thank you for being such an inspiring figure and for sharing your knowledge with young artists. Well, thank you very, very much. I mean, it's, it's a huge pleasure to do this. And I just feel very grateful and blessed that uh, you guys are here to, you know, um, to watch and participate and hopefully do this yourselves and get something out of it. Richard M8422 has a question for you, Eric. He says, are you trying to copy David's style here or are you trusting in your own? Um, I think it's column A and column B, really. Um, definitely learned a lot from Dave and just uh, um, different characters that you paint have different textures and, you know, ask, asking David, you know, what he, what he thinks about certain things. So, yeah, I think that's definitely, you know, a part of it is learning from Dave and then, naturally things that you do kind of creep into it. So, uh, yeah. and then just observing, you know, um, other, other pieces that, that you enjoy as well and try and incorporate all of that. Mm -hmm. Did that answer the question? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Right. Nettlewood Park says, I'm super slow with colored pencils. The process you're honing is very impressive. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, colored pencils are so much faster when you're working on, and this is why we use a, a base of paint. First of all, a, a base of uh, more of a mid-tone paper that we did with the airbrush and then uh, a dark tone of paint. And then the colored pencil really is, is just used uh, to bring out lights and to uh, round forms as opposed to trying to do the entire picture with a colored pencil, which would be very tedious. Can you maybe do the eyes while we're here? Um, it was just, oh, I think it was orange and yellow, right? Uh, yeah, orange and yellow, yeah. and then just a little bit of sepia, just you uh, know, yeah, around the, the edges. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Artuberist says, uh, do you have anyone else in mind to have a, 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 an in-studio appearance in the future, David? I don't actually. Uh, Eric, I, I went to visit Eric earlier on this year, and now Eric uh, came with his family to, to visit. So it just really worked out that we were able to do this because Eric is here. But it wasn't. we didn't plan this so we could do a stream, you know. Sheldon Martin has a $5 super chat. Thank you very much, Sheldon. And he says, feeling grateful and blessed is on both sides, Dave. I learned so much uh, since you started your channel. Well, thank you very much, Sheldon. And really for all of you guys, I know it's all of us that, uh, you know, have good times with art and bad times with art, and it can be a struggle and it can be heartbreaking. Um, it, it never ends, you know? I mean, that's, that's, I think the biggest appeal of doing this job, the biggest heartbreak and the biggest appeal is that you can never master it. So it's a, a lifelong passion and pursuit, but it's also a lifelong torture and misery, but that's what we're here for. So when you feel like you wanna quit, you're not alone, but don't quit. Dan DeSantos says, you guys are always well, welcome to visit me in North Carolina uh, Carolina and jam. Uh, Heroes Con is awesome. Did you hear that, Eric? Yeah, uh, when are we going? Uh, we're gonna have to plan that. Dan, we're coming. Yeah. I can't we see. We had the... talked about it before, and it, it's just it's been it's been a little difficult. But I'm I'm actually getting. Oh, I don't see the sip here. I wonder. It might have fallen. On the here floor. it is. Oh, yep, yeah, fall on the floor. Yeah, Dan, we need to talk. It, that would be amazing yeah. to be able. Also, I, I just really want to see some of those. Oh uh, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm far enough away. Okay. We're... There you go. Uh, I want to see some of those. Excuse me, Marvel masterpieces. Uh, you know, up in person, in yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. Sean Nellen says, how old are you guys? Uh, old. <laughs> I'm 51 years old. That's not young. And Eric is... Uh, 40, almost 45. There you go. Yeah, 45 not, going on 70 or something. Uh, we're not young. I'm feeling it. That sounds really bad. No, it's not that bad. Dan DeSanto says he's on sabbatical right now. So literally anytime. You know what? Yeah, when we need to talk, I, I think it would be amazing. It, you know what would be amazing? If we could somehow do a stream from Dan's place. Oh, yeah. That would be good. That would be a lot of fun. Yes. Extreme maybe says definitely got to stream that one. Adam Meyer has, hey, good to see Adam here. Has a $5 super chat. Says, Th it looks great, guys. Thank you very much, Adam. Adam. <clears throat> 
And Brickman101 says, hi, Dave, a tutorial of expressions comic book style would be cool. I think that would be a great video for sure to do some expressions. There's some that you had as part of the course that was uploaded, yes. but uh, yeah, it'll be great. And Dan says, easy peasy, I'll set up for it. Yeah, Dan, Dan DeSantos has the ultimate studio. It's, yeah. He's got everything and he's, he's uh, very particular about how he does everything. So yeah, I have no doubt that it is like the greatest setup. Do you want this for the people? Sure. Now or later? I might as well do it now. All right. It's going to bring the pupil back a bit. Arish Aki says, right now I'm in the office alone in the middle of painting a piece for tomorrow's deadline. Listening and watching you guys are the reasons I don't feel overwhelmed and more hyped instead. That is awesome. You good for now? Yeah. All right. Okay. Tag, tag it on. Yeah. All right. All right, so I'm going to go just a little more. It's a bit of a gold green color. Sharpening. I didn't give you enough time. Something else that I can also do is is go in here, and I'm going to do that right now, just quickly, and shore up some of my darks. You can see that. As you go along, a lot of your, your dark ends up lightening quite a bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and and uh, just punch in some of the darker darks again. Extreme Heavy says the tag team is kind of fun to watch. Yeah. 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 I don't know if we can convince Dan to do that one, though. Can you imagine? <laughs> With oil paint? Yeah. <laughs> Here, guys, you want to wreck this painting? Yeah. <laughs> How many artists are watching right now? That'll be interesting to see in the chat. So I I can go so quick and, and just loose with this because it's basically all established and all I'm doing is just um, just cleaning up some of my darks. And some of this even can look just a little bit stark but we still have an airbrush phase. This is where I, we really could just stop. Like the face is fine. It doesn't need more than this, but we can take it further and we're yeah, going to. Yeah, it really, it's really gonna transform again. And and again, this is what's so great about color pencils here is just the ability to, I mean, you have so much control at, at a pencil tip and it's, you know, you can, you can lay down, um, you know, shadows and corrections very, very quickly. Provided you have tooth, which you can always get back. Uh, you can just keep keep going with pencils. Uh, All right. Uh, I'm going to use my same black. I, I, I really should probably more. I'm going to just give the teeth a little bit of texture. I'm not hitting this too dark because I, I don't want to blow this out, but I'm just kind of drawing in some, some kind of um, craggly teeth detail. It's easy to get carried away, so I don't want to get too far. I'm going to go a little darker here and just shade that in. That should probably be two teeth. <laughs> just yeah, I, I probably should have gone a bit further here at the rendering stage. But, uh, um, again, you, know, you, can, you can do so much and take it so far with the pencil. So you, you can make a lot of corrections even later on in the painting. Yeah. All right. And the white. Or the prism color just breaks so easily. Prismas are very soft. Yes, yeah, yeah. One thing, one thing I like about the the Caran d'Ache luminance pencils is they're 
you know, they're, they're obviously very, very good, uh, light fast, etc. But they don't, they're not as soft, so they tend to last a bit longer, which helps justify the price, I guess. Uh, but yes, the Prisma colors are, are, are very soft, which is actually very nice for the white and the black. Um, they, they excel, I guess, throughout this process, the black and the white Prisma colors. All right, watch out. Okay. Uh, is this what you did for the new 52 Batman one cover, Dave? Story about Smith's ass. No. No, that one I, I did, it was entirely paint and it took me a week. And this is the thing, like the main advantage of this is, the main advantage really is, is predictability. I, I know what I'm gonna get, but the secondary big advantage is uh, um, time. Uh, Joshua Bullock, those highlights are great next to the mid-tone background. Yeah, and uh, I will make it pop later again. Uh, it, it provides such a nice, it's never nice to paint against the white background, so that really knocks that back and helps you get your values uh, correct. Mm -hmm. This is where I, I kind of wish I had it. So my teeth are, I'd like them to be a little more yellow. I, you know what, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to leave it there. I don't want to be going and digging up more pencils. Good enough. All right. So I've got blue here. I'm going to start just putting in the blue toward the core shadow. And then we'll go toward a lighter blue as it goes out. Did you use this technique for the Superman piece? Yes. Yeah, the Superman piece was entirely done this way. I've actually got a, a bunch of um, uh, Batman covers, especially that I've done this way over the last two months. Unfortunately, most of them are not, I can't show them yet. So uh, that colored pencil really sticks. Uh, yeah, yeah. Again, you know, the surface has been prepared enough to where um, you're not painting on slick acrylic. You know, if you use a different medium that would that we used, you, you know, you'd be struggling at this point. Yeah, now I am struggling here. I can't get it yeah, light enough. Up, so. But it's all right because yeah, we're gonna hit it with airbrush. That's right. Okay. Yeah, we've 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 tried this with, for example, uh, just regular um, matte acrylic, and that's just a little bit too slick. So the ultra the ultra matte is where it's at. Did you use black ink or paint for the black line arts and shadows? We used just regular ink. Yep. Um, and I actually used ink that isn't even really uh, waterproof. Like it, you can pick it back up with water, but because we, uh, and this is not doing what I wanted to do right now. So it's going to take a little bit of, I'm going to have to put another layer of matte medium on there in order to get the whites as high as I want. Unless I want to switch to paint, which I could also do, but I don't want to do. So uh, we're going to put another layer on. All right. That's going to be good enough to have like our base paint. Now we're going to go ahead and do some airbrush. And uh, I'm going to so we're going to use the other airbrush that David mentioned earlier. We're not going to use the initial airbrush that we used for the uh, for the spray texture. Yes, and Henry asked if I'm going to use the blue just on the right side. Yeah, uh, and it's going to be just a little bit more clean in, yeah, in just a minute here. Um, all right. So now it's a matter of finding my, what do we got here? Illustration burnt umber. Yeah, there it is. So I'm going to use green. I'm going to put a little burnt umber in there just because it was a little too intense. I bet I shake these things. I think we're good. Okay. And I want some black, which I had. Oh, uh... there we go. Black. I'm going to shake that one too. Okay. And I always mix them in the cups because um, 
I can see exactly what I'm doing here. And just a little bit of brown, so it's not, I just want to. Sealed. <laughs> sealed. I haven't used this one yet. Hold on. Oh, and this is Createx Illustration Colors. Yes. So we have stuff. A little brown in there. And then we'll use the 4011 reducer to uh, thin it out a little bit. Before I do that, I just want to make sure I like the color. It's black. Look at that. It's just black. <laughs> I'm going to add a little more green. That's why I like... Uh, yeah, add green here and then pour some in here. You out of your mind. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Test spray. All right. There, that's, that's a little better. It's got a little more color to it. Yeah, I don't want it to be so dark that it's just black. I mean, black would be all right, but you can start blowing out your picture. Okay, and where's my... Reducer. That's down there next to the yellow. See it. Okay. So this is 411 reducer. Probably too much. I don't care. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. The, the nice thing is all of this stuff, it's pretty uh it's pretty forgiving. Okay. Airbrush. Is it plugged in? Uh, no. One second. We still have the other airbrush plugged in, so, so just take a minute. So now with this airbrush, I'm going to end up losing some of my edges. And uh, I'll get those back with colored pencil when we're finished here. This is where this is going to take this picture from, you know, two hours to three hours, but it's totally worth it. Okay, there we go. I always forget I'm a lefty. All right. I had a shield. This thing's frustrating because it's huge, but... So you don't use matte medium here? No. Unless we wanted to come in with colored pencil again and it's not going down well, we don't, we don't airbrush matte medium here. Oh, well, we will use matte medium again, though, because I can't get my whites. Yeah, so on the right-hand side where there was too much wax pulled up, um, we'll spray paint some more ultra matte. Uh, neither of us are very good with an airbrush. You should see Dan Lassar do this. Yeah, Dan Lassar is really, really good. Yes. But, you know, we don't have to be great at this because this is just a small part of the process. And I'm going to be um, uh, complimenting this again with another layer of airbrush or another layer of colored pencil. Wait, a little more. Ah, too much. If you dab it really fast, you can kind of help. 
mostly you just really want to have more control than we have. Okay, that's it. Now I'm going to use a little bit of white. So, well, not white, but lighter color just for the lights. I almost, you know what? Let's not even bother. It looks fine. What do you think? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah. So my other, op my option now is to start to use some light to start to bring out some of the lights and to uh, clean some of that up. But honestly, I think it looks fine and, and just doing it for the sake of doing it. <laughs> Chris, Chris says uh, the open lidless reservoir is making me so nervous. <laughs> Dave and I live on the edge, man. Oh, yeah. And I will, yeah, I will say that we have both tumped uh, acrylic paints on our artwork before. So I'm, I'm just adding my Windex, which is not recommended for these things because it'll kill your chrome, but you know. Uh, Viv, and how do you decide when you're done with a piece? Uh, that can be tricky. You just gotta, uh, yeah, sometimes you just gotta walk away, but you know, it's good to sit on a piece for a little while too, if needs be. And then, you know, if you see something that needs adjusting, you can always come back and, and uh, change some things. Uh, Darnex says he's got to go, and he says good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Okay, that's gonna be good enough. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some purple. Yeah, we can hit the towel and then do the. Uh, <laughs> and you know, I could do the eye, and I could do. We're not gonna do all that. Here's what we are gonna do, though. Give the eye a nice little highlight. There we go. All right. <clears throat> I agree with Bob. He says you're done when you run out of coffee. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we're going to grab some purple here. <clears throat> purple. Some black. This is interesting. Tangamo Model Works says, windshield washer fluid is easier on the chrome and works the same. Plus, it's cheaper. <laughs> really? Okay, we're going to try that for sure. Why do I mix this before I put my... Where's my stuff? Reducer. Drop that in there. I put too much. Who cares? I don't know. Okay. Nobody wants to be here all day, right? Psycho Pump said he experienced a hurricane and an earthquake in the same day. Where's my shield? Yeah, it's crazy that there's a hurricane that side of that side of the state, so hopefully everyone's okay. Oh, look at that. It kind of worked. Kind of adding a little purple to the green back here just to kind of push it back all right maybe i'll add a little here now i'm getting carried away this is where things really fall off the rails when i start going hey i'll add purple here and whatever all right so that's done now we're going to add another layer of matte medium we'll do some color pencil and we'll be done we're almost done here But the last layer of colored pencil after a layer of matte medium, and we're doing the medium. Uh, we mentioned this a bunch of times earlier on, but in case uh, you're coming in a little later, we're doing the medium because I can't add more colored pencil to this. It just won't stick. But once we put a layer of medium on there, we'll be able to colored pencil it as if it's new paper. I'm slowly dumping out my paint in here. This is such a hassle. Nobody likes doing this.
and I hate to do this to you guys, but I'm going to do one more round just because on these on these ones, when they gum up, they're such a hassle to clean. Uh, where's my hair? Is it? All right. So I'm sure, and I do right here, right? Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna. This is the stuff I, I mixed up before. I'm just gonna kind of mix it together again, make sure that we're good. This stuff can kind of congeal a little bit. So yeah. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm sure it'll be fine. We're gonna hook up the pash. We're gonna do layer the medium over this. This is um. Again, ultra matte medium with uh, airbrush medium, probably half and a half, thereabouts. Fill up my little reservoir here, open it up all the way, and yeah, we're going. All right, here we go. All right, that's going to do it. Um, dump this out and clean this one. I swear, I feel like more of an airbrush cleaner than anything else. That's like my job. You want me to do it while you carry on? Sure. You want to hit it with the air gun? Yeah. All right, hair dryer time. I'm going to mute myself. Where's this? Tom Teacher said, don't forget to unmute it. So I didn't forget. All right. And you'll notice when I put this on, it really uh, it fogs everything up. But as soon as it dries, it, it clears right up. All right. So now that I've got that, that extra layer of medium, I'll be able to go in here with my white. And you can see that I probably should have let it dry just a little bit longer. It actually picked up just a little bit there. I'm going to have to, I hate to do this to you guys, but I'm going to have to do it. A little more just so it cures. Hopefully that did it. No, it's still picking up. I just need to give it a minute. This is the problem. We're like trying to work so fast. So what has a tendency to happen if you don't let this dry just a little bit? It starts cratering and picking up. And I'm just way too like I'm too impatient to wait. I'm going to have to wait. Guys, we're going to have to wait. <clears throat> Henry says, uh, it's great to have you guys back doing some art again and hanging out with the flock chat as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it's nice to be able to actually see a lot more of your comments. Uh, so many of these streams I'm, I'm drawing and I just don't see it. So this has been really good. Let's give us another try. There we go. And you see, I just needed to wait just a little bit longer just to let it cure, and I'm too impatient. Oh, 
rubber way where I picked it up. And even now, it's it's not perfect, but I'm not sitting here all night, so it's kind of going to be what it's going to be. If I was properly doing this, I'd probably go get coffee and really let this thing kind of cure, but we're moving on. And this is also where, when this kind of thing happens, I could also just switch to paint. I'm going quiet now. Yeah. That's uh, going to just about do that. Let me um, bring in a little bit of color. Soften that up just a little bit. Because I didn't go with any light airbrush, everything got just a little bit dark. But uh, Dennis says, Thank you, Dave and Eric, for the awesome stream. You guys knock it out of the park each time. Thank you. With me having fun. Yeah. And this is where it becomes a bit of a, you know, you want to get as much done as you can in one pass, but you always have the opportunity to give it another look and say, hey, you know, maybe because I, I'm, I'm having such an easy time getting my pencil to go on here now, it's all nicely cured by this point. Uh, I can really go quite a bit further with this picture. Um, yeah, Richard Play says, acrylic millions of issues adhering to waxy surfaces, and I don't let things dry for at least an hour and do two coats. I often have two things going to switch back and forth. Yeah, you, you got to wait. And... Yes, and that's exactly what happened. It's just, you know, impatience. Yeah. I just wanted to throw it on there and get going. And usually I don't run into that because I'm, I'm not just, you know, blistering, trying to get it done. Because I know you guys are sitting here watching like, okay, moving on, guys. Yeah, you know, it's probably a good thing that happened. I'm saying this like <laughs> consoling myself saying that it's a good thing that happened because at least you can see what happens when you're not patient. <laughs> Story of Mars Moses says, I saw a video from Sarah Frazetta of her grandmother telling Frank to stop messing around with finished paintings. Well, there we go. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of doing that now, aren't I? <laughs> I do want to... Uh, Kevin says, I'd love to see you guys do a Mephisto, all those reds. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be a lot of fun. Paul says, you, Paul Essenson says, you could stream for six hours and move it straight to you. Know, Just give it a bit of a shadow over the teeth there. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Paul. I really, I mean, as always, you guys know, I, I really appreciate it. And so does Eric. Right, Eric? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking for you. I'm just going to throw in some purple here really quick. Give him some purple gums. Uh, Allison McGlynn's here. So hey, you're... Allison. And uh, yes, I did get to see <laughs> Just going to restate some of my highlights here. So they kind of get a little lost. And uh, lazy highlight, which I really should be using paint for, but I didn't. And we need a little purple. Just as a bit of a highlight here. I 
and what you put down there because like it works so well it's really easy for me to just kind of pull out just a couple a little bit of that just to bring back just a little bit of light because i really darkened it quite a bit Yeah, each successive pass can add so much more. Yep. Very workable. And a little bit of black. Let's see where we are with that. Yeah, I kind of lost a little bit of... And you really don't want to get too carried away, obviously. But so much of it is edges. I was pretty i feel like pretty successful if i do save them so myself yeah yeah <laughs> and not losing my edges but yeah normally when hitting with the airbrush you know edges can get lost very easily so yeah you just you just kind of tend to start cutting in with the edges again yeah yeah doesn't have to be much of that it's not <clears throat> what do you think done yeah, done good. all right there you go that's that's basically it kind of start to finish of you know how uh how we've been working lately to to do these things and uh, how I've been doing some of my, my covers and some of that stuff lately so we really wanted to share that especially with Ryan Brown coming where I think we're going to learn a lot and, and our process I'm sure will alter a little bit from here, but this really is um, such a, an easily workable process and such a controllable process that I, I can't see any place where we, we would just completely walk away from this. It's just way too predictable, um, which is what you want when you're, when you're working with something complex like paint, you want to be able to build from the drawing and, and get all the way up to the, the final art in a way that you're happy with so yeah I'm pretty happy with how that came out yeah i think so yeah all right uh yeah okay well thank you everyone again thanks for spending um uh sunday night with us it's 10 30 which means this took two and a half hours it's really not all that bad actually yeah it's just testing it to the process again yeah uh so yeah thank you very much it was great to see all of you again uh dan DeSanto says amazing i'm stunned at how good you guys got in such a short amount of time just goes uh, to show the power of dedication, kudos. Well, thank you so much, Dan, really. I mean, that means so much coming from you. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, so, yeah, and we we are going to plan to uh, come visit Dan. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, that would be amazing. So, yeah, uh, everybody have a, a great week, uh, and we will, we will see you soon. Uh, and enjoy the summer. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night.